All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another uh, guided run. Uh, it's going to be focused on wands, and this run is going to be uh, centered around the new quest line that was added into Noita. Um, it, basically, there is a whole quest line, so there there will be spoilers, but note there is no way for you to currently figure this out without like digging into the code. However, obviously, our community is filled with people who are craving new content so once again thank you to the devs for that uh let's quickly go over the patch notes and then we'll get into the run so we have a whole set of new spells here all of them very interesting in their own right some of them going to be a lot more useful than others but they're all pretty cool we've also got two new enemies you can only find those in new game plus and plus plus so we won't be seeing those today and uh, three new secret spells this is the quest line that we're going to be going for and uh, i will be doing the whole thing because that, that's pretty cool and fun. And uh, yeah, we, we've got a couple updates and some bug fixes. So dupe around and find out. Uh, you can duplicate perks at the nullification altar. But uh, after the first one, there is a 50-50 chance you're permanently polymorphed, which is kind of cool. Uh, definitely nerfs that strategy down a little bit. And uh, yeah, it's, it's good to see that they're taking like a, a bug or exploit and they're making it like a proper mechanic. That's nice. Um, better interaction between no wand tinkering and tinker with wands everywhere basically means that if you have two tinker with wands everywhere, it cancels out no wand tinkering and vice versa. And uh, yeah, th there's just like a lot more play between these perks now, but no wand tinkering is still terrible. Probably wouldn't recommend it ever. Um, but it's nice that it exists. Like no wand tinkering is a little bit less painful if you roll a gamble now. That that's the the main thing to take away. Luki minion is slightly more powerful. This is really nice. Luki minion's been garbage forever, and this makes it a little bit better. Uh, one thing to note about it, if you in the current state, is if you mod restart, it'll fly away and you'll never see it again, which is a little bit of a shame. But otherwise, uh, I actually think that this is a pretty good perk on like a normal run. Uh, spells can now be dropped from inventory at all times. This is a huge change to the game. Um, it should, in theory, help a lot with uh, you know j just inventory management. It'll, it's this is really a good change for newer players, and it's a good change for people who are doing longer runs. It's it's fantastic. Very, very nice. So thank you for that, Nala. Uh, spell drop rates, rebalance. This is a pretty huge change. There's a lot of really subtle stuff that you can find on the wiki about this, but things like Fireball, Orbit, and uh, Increased Mana have been nerfed in terms of their drop rate, which means that you're less likely to find them. And uh, yeah, basically just like a meta rebalance. And um, yeah, I don't know how to feel about this entirely, but I think it's a good thing because uh, th this is definitely going to make the game a little bit more challenging on the main path, and it'll open up more variety, I think, which is definitely needed. Every, everybody and their mom is running machine gun uh, spark bolt trigger into imagination. It's, it's one of those things. But yeah, we're, we're going to try and break that mold today, at least after we, we get uh, rolling. Of, of course, it's uh, having the, the spark bolt trigger. It's, it's nice. It's just a good spell, you know? But yeah, other than that, we've got an update to bounce radius, uh, explosive bounce radius being increased. That's not that big of a deal. And then we've got a huge chunk of bug fixes, some nightmare changes. Um, so nightmare wind streaking is going to be a lot better, which is nice. No more track gold on enemies is not that big of a deal, but kind of nice. Permanent polymorph is pol uh, permanent. That is referring to uh, the dupe around find out. There is ways of uh, unpolying yourself. Uh, in the, the, here are some big ones. So a lot of the inventory glitches in the game have been patched out. That includes um, five wanding and um, uh, like all the inventory infinite spell cramming and, and the infinite wand holding, like all that has been patched. Note that there is like a mod to turn this back on if you're interested, or uh, it, it's actually an available toggle in the code uh, where you can turn these back on. The devs intentionally allow you to play with these if you want um but we will be leaving that off from now on because i want to play the game as intended uh fixed a rare crash when enemies converted to a ragdoll tech sprite thank you dexter um for for finding that uh fixed another inventory exploit that allows carrying of extra wands that was one i talked about fixed lucky minion sometimes escaping and disappearing i don't know if this is referring to the mod restart one we'll have to find out and uh vi th this is swapper can no longer move cursed rock so they, they could move the background aura of Cursed Rock by taking damage. It was a really funny and dumb exploit that's existed for a long time. I'm glad to see this one gone because it's actually just really annoying in very specific spots. So that's good. 
Uh, closing inventory while uh, starting to drag items is fixed. This is another one of the crazy inventory glitches we messed around with. Alt-Tab silliness is now fixed. That's the spell cramming. Uh, optimized particle effects. This is just going to improve the, the game's performance, hopefully. Player can no longer polymorph into Olematon. I don't know which enemy that is off the top of my head. Ruined Son of Edges could cause Puska to shoot forever. Um, that probably a very specific glitch, but that that's nice to see gone. Uh, mouse cursor displays the material even in far lands. So yeah, th this used to break. If you went like two parallel worlds over, you couldn't tell what uh, material you you were hovering, which is a little silly. Optimized circle of stillness and freezing gaze. A circle of stillness. I didn't realize that one got optimized too. That's really nice. Um, these are great spells. Freezing gaze is incredibly strong, and it's good to see it buffed. Th this this is a direct buff because you know now the spell is a lot more usable, a lot more spammable. Fix null shot, breaking modifiers after cast, uh, uh, wait, cast after it. This does some crazy shit. There, there's some weird bugs with this spell. I think it's still not working perfectly, but um, definitely a really strong new spell. Uh, cosmetic fix to alchemist background. I'm interested to see what that is. Uh, more optimizations, including freeze field and ice ball spell. That's nice. And fixed a rare crash that could happen with too many materials. So yeah, uh, that, that's that's all. And then there's like a ton of modding stuff, which is great because um, the modders have been going crazy in this game lately. Hopefully that is helpful for uh, anybody who's looking to know the, the patch notes. You can see the date here uh, that we're going to be playing today. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to our run. Let's go ahead and get into it. One thing that I want to mention today is that I'm going to be running like a couple of cosmetic mods. Uh, they, they're not going to have any influence on gameplay. J just like some nice stuff, you know? Just just some stuff that makes me happy. So yeah, we're, we're going to have that going on. We got a spark bolt and bomb start today. So uh, I, I guess from this point onward, I will be talking spoilers for the quest line. And we will be talking about uh, what we're, we're planning to do and uh, what power level I'm going to be looking to achieve. Uh, I, I don't know exactly how long this run will take, pr probably around like an hour and a half, if I had to guess, if we move at like a reasonable pace. But um, the, the game plan is we need to keep an eye out for a spell that can move fish, right? So in order to move fish, we're going to need either a Homebringer or a Buoyancy or... Um, a, a vacuum field that can rapid field, ra rapid fire very, very rapidly. Um, any of those would work just fine. And, um, yeah, we'll, hopefully we'll be able to get something like that. Oh, also, you know what? Here's a new thing that we should do. Um, if you're interested in playing along at home with, with this same seed, uh, you can use the set seed changer. And uh, you can see in the bottom left here, this is my seed. So if you want to try and, uh, you know, emulate what I do on this run, you could do that, play along, and, uh, yeah, let me know how that goes, because I, I think that could be kind of neat. If, if anybody is really struggling with Noita, uh, that, that, that could be a, uh, a good way to potentially, you know, get your hands on some good wands at the very least. Okay, what do we got? We got our first wand right here. It's a uh, 345. That's not that good. Uh, this gold wand has a chance to be a 10-7, and uh, that is definitely a really nice wand. Uh, my, my first order of business whenever I am on a fresh run... What is that? That's Flum. We're going to be keeping an eye out for a version of uh, Polymorph, because that's going to be key to getting the quest done. But uh, yeah, the, the first thing that I'm interested in hunting down uh, at the start of every run is always my tablet. If I can get my tablet, then I'm, I'm going to be in great shape. You know what? I'm realizing that I can use this Flamoxium to make some uh, some polymorph if I need to. So we might go get around to doing that. Looks like we managed to kill a fire guy. Beautiful. That's very nice. Got a few random things dead here. That's a little bit of a scary enemy. Gotta be careful. The acid guy, or the acid shooters tend to be, like, one of the most dangerous enemies in the, the early game here. Uh, especially since we can't, like, one-hit kill their acid blobs super easily. They can just do so much damage to you if you're not careful. We got uh, a very tricky seed to navigate, the, the start here. This has been a real pain in the butt trying to get over to the tablet. Hopefully we've made it now. Looks like we have. One of the nice things about the arrow is it does one-shot the majority of enemies on this first floor. And uh, that eight degrees of spread is completely negated by the arrow itself, which is 
pretty convenient. I'll probably use this instead of the spark bolt for the first floor here. It's just a, a little bit better. Not a ton, but enough. I used the water to catch myself there. That way I didn't fall all the way down. It wasn't necessary, but, you know, it saves me a little bit of trouble. But yeah, you can see this is uh, one of the cosmetics mods that I've got active is the Pride tablet. I figure it's Pride, might, might as well rock it. It's a, it's, it's a very nice looking tablet and it's got a good message behind it too. I like it. Um, but yeah, we're, we're going to gather up, I don't know how much gold. Hmm. Oh wait, we should take a look at that potion. Like I said, potions are really important in the, in the early game here. I'd love to track down my polymorph flask early. That will be very helpful. Uh, we're going to mix our blood flask with water here. Water is just nice because you can use it to, um, you know, deal with toxic sludge. And blood does not deal with toxic sludge. Blood does have the advantage of uh, applying crit chance to every single one of your projectiles, though. And uh, if, if you know how, like, concentrated spells stacks, where, like, each individual spell in a spell block will increase your your damage by like plus 16 flat it's the same way with the uh, blood where it'll it'll increase that that crit chance by uh the, the I, I believe it's 15 percent um if, if you know the exact value or or if i'm correct please please make sure you comment down below I'll, I'll, I'll pin the first person who gives me the right answer i'll i'll, I'll go and look at the, the wiki later and i'll i'll confirm it You'll see that in the comments. But yeah, um, I, I guess while we're talking about the comment section, uh, if there is like a seed that you struggled on that you think would be like a fun seed for me to play and do like a, a normal run on or like get to a god run or anything like that, uh, I'd love it if you would like link that and let, let me know what the, the challenging part of it was and I'll, I'll go in and see how it goes because I, I think that would be pretty fun. To, to do some of that, but uh, there, there's still so many runs that I want to do. I, I want to get like a, a pacifist run done with this challenge because I, I feel like it'd be really helpful to to have like the the thought process behind a um what, what do you call it a, like a, a pacifist run because it's it's very different from playing the game normally. Same same with like a no gold run. No gold is nice because it just like limits your resources. And uh, I've got some really specific strats that I tend to employ uh, when I'm doing, like, a no-gold run. Uh, specifically, uh, I, I tend to just get off the first and second floor as quickly as possible because that that's where Powdered Gold is the most plentiful. And uh, Powdered Gold is one of the most likely run-enders you can encounter, essentially. It's, uh, it's quite nasty. Yeah, we're dealing with these hammies pretty well. Rest in peace. We're up to nearly 800 gold, and we've got 95 life, which is very good. But we are lacking on bombs, which means that our pathing is going to be pretty limited at this point. Looks like the game is telling us to go down at this point. These uh, hammies. There were so many entities on screen that it wasn't able to spawn the extra ones. If you ever find a giant stack of uh, hammies like that, it's often worth it to leave and come back if you're looking to get the maximum value out of murder. Um, looks like this might actually punch all the way through, which it did, and that means that there's pretty much guaranteed to be a couple enemies down here. There we go. Not too bad. Just a, just a little bit of extra gold. And that brings us up to 880, which is pretty much enough for just about anything. I'm, I'm going to look around just a brief bit more on the first floor. I, I, I feel like it's nice to just hang out on this floor for a little while and get a little bit extra powerful. And if you're not taking damage like me, I, I normally, if, if you watch my stream, you see I take a ton of damage on the first floor normally. But, um, you know, th this time it's going pretty well. It's one of those things where when I don't have to split my attention, it helps. So yeah, if you're not taking damage on this first floor, obviously we can skip over this heart and uh, go into the next level with the, the amount of extra HP that we have, which is super handy. Uh, we do have a poly uh, field, which we could use to polymorph ourselves if we find uh, piercing. That, that would be one way of transforming. And we've got repulsion field or trick blood money. These are both really good. Uh, I think repulsion field... It's probably a teensy bit stronger for, you know, just about everything. And uh, give me one moment here. I'm getting a sound bug. Let me let me fix that really quick. Let me fix that. Just gotta adjust my buffer size. 
There we go. That was that was my computer, in case you were wondering. Alrighty, let's continue. Light is definitely worth purchasing, and um, the the Lumi timer is kind of tempting. I'm gonna grab the the torch. I've actually been liking the torch a little bit more recently, as I've been visiting the dark cave more and more on uh, across my runs. I'm gonna grab this spell refresher now. That way, I've got some bombs. I, I've uh, gone into second floor and regretted not having explosives a couple times it recently, so I, I don't want to keep making that mistake. I feel like it's such a, a simple mistake to mitigate. I, I might as well just bring some form of explosives. So once again, we are in the early game, very much so. So you, you don't really need anything outside of your absolute basics to get stuff done, which is really nice. I'm happy to just have, like, an arrow wand going into this floor. It's it's a little bit of extra damage over the uh, the other setup, the uh, the spark bolt. So th this nest spawn is really common with this whole formation. While that's burning away, I'm going to go and look to handle that. Um, but it looks like I don't really have a super easy way in. I, I'm contemplating whether I use one bomb to bomb from the side or two bombs to bomb from the top. I feel like bombing from the top tends to be a, a much easier way to fight it, but we're just going to go with with this path for the time being. But yeah, hopefully we can find like a decent no shuffle wand and transform our wand because arrow plus spitter bolt actually has some pretty nice synergies that I'd love to show off on this run. It'd be a decent early game combo. You can see repulsions putting in a lot of work here as long as they don't get like a super direct shot at me. They'll have a very hard time actually landing a shot. There we go. I do believe there is a wand around. Oh, hi. Yeah, the faster bullets can still hit me. That is a slime potion. None of the none of the things that I'm after. Slime can be used to transform unstable teleportadium, so we can keep it in mind, because obviously unstable teleport is very, very valuable. You can do lots of handy stuff with that, that's for certain. Uh, but we're down to 52 life. Probably don't need to be wandering this far to the right, but you know, they're, they're, this floor is just so plentiful when it comes to HP. And one thing to note is, uh, you know, I, I always sing the high praises of Fungal Caverns because it's always no shuffle wands. But note that the spell quality of the second floor is completely consistent throughout. So the spells that you can get in the Fungal Caverns are the precisely the same spells that you can get um, throughout the rest of the floor. And that might come as a shock to you, but it is absolutely the case. And that means that uh, you can just go ahead and find a, a lucky mana or a lucky chainsaw or a luminous drill or anything uh, just in the early game here without even having to risk going into fung fungal caverns if you don't feel like it. So um, we, we were stuck there on a, a, a little invisible pixel. So what I did was I placed my tablet down here and uh, I got like stuck up against it as much as I could. And uh, then I mashed WAD, which uh, uh, makes it so... Th there's like a, a failsafe where if you get stuck in Noita and you mash WAD hard enough, uh, it'll, it'll basically just destroy like a small chunk of the world around you, which is really handy. Um, th this is perfect, by the way. This wand is gorgeous and uh, will certainly serve our purpose. So the game plan is we're going to dump that because it's not a very good spell. And we'll do this. So you can see here that we have perfect spread. Despite Spitter adding 6 degrees of spread and this adding 10, it's being completely removed by the arrow there. So we've got a, a, a perfect spread there, which is very, very nice. And we might even put this on a Lumity timer so that way I can shoot even faster. The red glimmer is lost, but uh, I, th I think that's a price I'm willing to pay. That seems pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and use that for now. And, um, this bomb wand is not really super high purpose. I'd rather not let an enemy get uh, a hold of a bomb. So we're gonna go ahead and leave that up there in that wall. And, uh, now I'm more than happy to refocus on going toward Fungal Caverns again. Because we've got so much digging to work with, we should have no problem at all. Note that I am at 52 uh, health, which is not great. But uh, we, we don't need a ton of HP just to, to clear there. Once again, uh, the, the, the damage reach that I'm primarily concerned about in the early game on this floor would be 27 from a shotgunner 
and then 44 once we make it to the fungal caverns so we, we we've got some time to work with uh note that there are higher damage reaches than uh that obviously i, I could get doused in lava and die from like 50 plus health even um but you know they, they, you gotta you gotta play the odds and for, for me that that feels like a pretty unlikely event so i'm not gonna worry about that we will, we will play around it you got another no shuffle wand here that's pretty nice a bunch of sparks and a triple spell the triple spell is pretty nice i'm not gonna bother depositing that just yet let's take a look at a couple more wands here and we will keep on clearing i'm gonna pre-explode these i just don't really want to have to risk getting blown up on my way back okay we've hit that all important 44 hp mark and my teleports are getting me into a little bit of trouble long tell or long teleport is so much more dangerous than short teleport but that doesn't mean short teleport can't occasionally get you into some trouble that's for certain got a nice little green biome here you can get an hp spawn in here but it always has like a bunch of um potions and stuff i'm gonna grab the pheromone flask and uh, i'll show you a little trick when we make it back to the holy mountain uh, obviously a big part of my strategy whenever i'm playing noita is uh, to make sure that i have a way to edit at pretty much all times so being able to go back and edit is uh, just just really handy we're gonna take a look at this wand here too and see which ones we should bring back with us this one is a shuffle yes which means that we're not going to use it as our base but it does have a double spell on it hmm I'm, so hear me out. The The fire missile wand is one that we're going to be coming back and using, and it's in the perfect spot. Uh, I don't need to do any additional digging uh, compared to what I've already done, so I'm going to leave that behind, and uh, we'll, we'll be coming back for it in a moment, and that way it'll save me one extra trip. I can deal with these wands a little bit faster that way. So let's go ahead and grab all these and that. Drunkon Explosion is kind of funny. I'm going to bring it with me. I doubt I'll use it, but... You know, if, if I get, like, a Mist of Spirits, maybe there's a chance. Um, this wand is pretty good. 45 recharge time is, like, a little bit gross. But I think I'm going to use that as my teleport wand for the time being. And I'm going to put the double spell at the end here, so that way it spell wraps and I can get the light every shot. And uh, basically this makes it so I can bypass the 0.45 recharge time a single time rather than dealing with... The point. So ba basically uh, I've, I've got like a, a slightly faster shot, you'll see here. It's like dunk dunk, dunk dunk, and it, 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 it like waits a moment. So yeah, that's kind of a thing. Uh, these eggs are not really helpful in my current endeavors, so we're going to dump those. And uh, feeling pretty good. I could maybe swap some stuff around to get some more damage output out of this which is an interesting idea if if i put the light here we should be able to shoot really really fast but uh, the mana drain is obviously a little bit too much um we could also add a spark bolt onto this thing with the triple spell and uh, i i think that that's a, a pretty tempting option because spark bolt will ramp up our damage quite a bit and give the five percent crit chance uh, that it has to the other two spells that it's tied to so now each of these spells has a five percent chance to crit and if i'm bloodied for example then that would increase up to uh like i guess 15 percent chance on each and god it's, it, it would be pretty likely it sounds pretty good but um of course I'm, I'm not like actively putting blood on myself yet maybe we'll we'll try that strategy in a bit but for now let's go ahead and hang on i gotta drink this blood off the bottom there we go. I wasted a little bit of pheromone there, but that's alright. Let's go ahead and sell some of our wands. Normally, I don't have any problems with money, but uh, if you, by chance, have any troubles with money, this is a, a really, really good use case for pheromone. Um, just go ahead and set up a, a, a little pool, drop the wand in, and it'll convert it like you're selling it. Um, there, there used to be like a, a glitch where a ghost would spawn, and ghosts can't, or enemies can't carry empty wands, so they would just spawn repeatedly, and then you could kill them for infinite money. But instead, um, we have this method now, which is a lot faster and a lot nicer overall. And you can see, we just went from 1,000 to 1,800 gold um, 
with just a tiny pool of pheromone and three relatively not good wands. And uh, the gold value you get from that scales, so that's really handy. Uh, also, we've got a heart here. Nice. There is a chance for that culpit to have HP ups in it. Uh, th this also has a spawn chance for a heart as well. Um, having light on my teleport every time rather than just some of the time here is going to... Oh my goodness. It's going to help a little bit with uh, choosing what to do, which is nice. It's always scary when an enemy picks up a wand. As we've learned from last episode. <laughs> oh my goodness. Alrighty. By the way, speaking of last episode, I, I, guess I'd, I, I guess I should talk about my upload schedule. Um, I don't really have, like, a super precise plan for it just yet, but every Wednesday I want to, uh, knock one of these videos out, and, um, you know, if, if any, like, light editing is needed, we'll do that, but, uh, yeah, I, I just want this to, like, supplement with, with my other crazy stuff, whatever difficult, uh, to edit thing I'm making at the time, Th this will kind of go alongside it, and I, I think that's a good way of handling that. I guess we might as well, you know, we, I've, I've shown off the, the selling system. I, I don't really need to sell anything else. Um, I just want to show that for your sake. I didn't really need the money anyway. Let's run over this way. Let's see what other goodies we've got. There's a lot of gold in the in this level. Um, if you're a nightmare, I would recommend harvesting a lot of the gold. But um, in, in base game, the, the, the gold is plentiful, so I, I wouldn't worry too much about it. You'll, you'll, you'll get there. Let's see if we can sneak through here. Beautiful. That's an Ambrosia Flask. We're gonna dump our fair, or our, uh, our Flum first, because that's just completely worthless. This wand's pretty scary. Um, any wand with the potential to stun lock and multiple triggers, that, that can deal a lot of damage to the player. So we need to be wary of that. I'm gonna put it up in the wall and hope no teleport mage grabs it there. We did grab, uh, Freeze Charge. One thing to note about um, ice damage, or the, the freezing effect, is that while it's really, really effective against some enemies, other enemies, you'll end up buffing with it. Um, primarily the, the Robocop and the Robot Assassin are the, the two that I need to be afraid of in this instance. We've got an Uko. As long as we just shoot him nice and even there, we won't have any problem. Um, pollen is pretty good, but I don't really use it that much. Every, everybody always tells me how great it is, but I, I haven't really figured out the, the optimal usage for it yet. Although that said, it is pretty good with uh, one of the new spells that they've added. I would love to show that off at some point. Okay. This is uh, this is looking like an explodey time. Remember that gold is not worth a ton of your HP. That said, this guy's trapped in there, so we don't really have that much to worry about. Another Ambrosia Flask! Wowee! Um... I'm going to try and put this somewhere where I'm hoping it won't break. Uh, I mean, the chances are pretty high that it will break, but we'll, we'll, we'll attempt to place it somewhere where I, th I think it might be safe for future usage. Uh, it would be nice to have access to that. But anyways, back to what I was talking about with the re regarding freeze charge. Enemies that are robots or ghosts will get doubled attack speed and nearly doubled move speed, uh, meaning that they will get really, really scary. Like, you... you Imagine Robocop, and now imagine Robocop shooting twice as much. That that doesn't sound very pleasant, does it? So, um, yeah, let's let's try to avoid that situation. If we come across a Robocop, I don't intend on shooting him with the freezing part of this wand. We will instead use a, um, a tablet. Well-placed tablet kick. Which, by the way, if, if you're new to the series, I do have a guide for tablet kicking. Um, that I, I put a bunch of work into, so hopefully that'll be handy to you. Um, hey, there's our polymorph. We're gonna want that. Hopefully nobody breaks it. So this is one of the robot assassins. We've got multiple methods of dealing with them, uh, thanks to Ambrosia, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it like that. And we've got a polymage. This is a very scary, like, lots of unique enemies spawning in this fungal caverns. Uh... I said it earlier, and I'll say it again, playing through fungal caverns over and over, especially when you're new, is like training in the hyperbolic time chamber. It's it's just so tight and so intense with with all the enemies that um, you'll learn the game very quickly, and you'll learn a lot of really dangerous enemies very quickly as well. Um, that said, of course, it is rather dangerous, but uh, I think it's a risk worth taking with all the, the goodies that can be in here. This is one of the strongest ways to, to get more powerful. 
Or one of the fastest ways to get more powerful on a run, as far as I'm concerned. There we go. Just kind of punching through everyone. The, the ice corpse there ended up murdering a bunch of these little things. We got more polymorph, which is good to know, but I, I really only need the one. Hello. That guy yeah, took the, the wand that I left earlier. Um, this has a chance of spawning the, uh, the a heart or a chest in there, but we didn't get either, sadly. And uh, as much as I'd like to take that broken wand, we're going to have plenty of good options, and I, I don't really have to worry too much about it. This isn't always cast. I knew it wasn't always cast because there's like a, su a slight purple hue. You walk away, you can see here. Um, and let's go ahead and grab this wand. It, the always cast is quite terrible, and the mana on it is quite bad as well. Just at a brief assessment, uh, it's, it's just pretty poor overall. Um, but energy orb might be worth taking, and there are some use cases I can come up with for, uh, saw blade orbit, so we'll, we'll hold on to it for the time being. We might as well not leave with, with just three wands, that would be a little silly. The location where I am currently at actually has a chance of a heart or chest spawn, but we didn't get either. And we'll just keep on moving here. Uh, what, one thing that people were requesting uh, of the, the previous set of comments was um, th that I go over my wands a little bit more in depth. So I'm, I'm going to try and do that here uh, once we get into the next Holy Mountain, do another little rebuild. This wand has double spells for days, which is really nice. Um, I might dump my fire missile wand because fire missiles are limited and they're not the most useful thing. They're, they're pretty good, but... You know, I, I I prefer to have unlimited spells, and more double spells is really strong because it's a zero cost spell that just increases your uh, your combo potential by so much. It's it's a really really strong spell to have, especially if we can come across some larger wands. And in this quest line, we're guaranteed to get at least one. Alrighty, let's go ahead and strip off those double spells. Personal gravity field has a couple use cases. This is a Shuffle Yes wand, you can tell by the lack of diamond on it. And uh, we've got another Repulsion Sector if we want it. Let's take a quick look at our wands here before we go buying any perks. Luminous Drill is huge. That is uh, just like a significant discount over the Luminous Timer that we're currently using. Uh, but the wand itself is not very useful. One of the things that um, I, I think I've already said on previous episodes, but I'll say it again is um, in the early game, you should focus a lot less on getting good wands and a lot more on getting good spells. Um, you know, the, the good wands, they, they'll show up from time to time. You'll get like a decent base wand like this every now and then. This is, this is honestly a little bit above average. This was probably a little bit more in line with what you'll find on the, the first floor or the second floor there. But um, yeah, it's, it's one of those things where you just got to keep an eye out for one or two decent wands. And, you know, th this would make like a perfectly functional teleport wand, for example, or like a decent wand with, with just an energy orb on it. There's, there's lots of different options for that sort of thing. Anyway, we're, we're going to roll these because I'm not really super inspired. And I, I do not feel any joy sparked. Item radar is kind of cool, but we're, we're going to roll again. Um, close call is also... Kind of a th I'm gonna roll again. Forget it. One up is great. Uh, gold is forever is fine, but one up is just nice. It, it, it it's mistake proofing. You know, I I can't screw up as hard now. Hopefully. Um. So yeah, let's keep our saw blade orbit, and we will set up this shuffle yes as a digging wand because it is just superior in every way to my other options. There we go. So the primary thing I'm going to be looking for going into this uh, this next floor here is uh, a way to murder uh, the bosses. So we, we want to have a way to kill Pit Boss or Pyramid or Alchemist. If we can get some of that, then we're going to be rolling really fast and uh, we'll be able to just kind of snowball out of control. This next floor, Ice is like not that good and it's pretty tempting to take it off. Um, I, th I think we're going to rework our wand a little bit with uh, double spells, and we're going to try to make something a lot more mana efficient, uh, like so. And uh, we'll, we'll space these out in such a way that makes sense. Note that this freeze charge can be like in the multicast set, and it'll still apply to everything. But, um, you know, just for ease of reading, we'll do something like this. You can see the double spell grabs the arrow, and then this double spell 
and then this double spell grabs the spark bolt, and then this double spell, and this double spell grabs these two spells. And uh, this freeze charge actually grabs this double spell. I, I didn't mention that. But you can see it's shooting like that now. And uh, if we wanted it to shoot a little faster, this torch actually does draw, so we, we could do that. And then it could shoot even faster. This arrow is uh, three times the cost of a spark bolt, so we might be better off just going pure spark bolt for now. And this is like a little bit of a lame wand. I'll be real. It's, it's not that cool. But it'll definitely do the trick for the floor. So I, I think we'll go with something like that. And um, I'm wondering if I want to have the light on this wand or on this wand. It, it's, it's always like tricky to... The, the, the one thing I don't like about torches, it does light stuff on fire, which can be a little bit scary at times. But I, I think we're going to go with something like this. It seems pretty good. And uh, let's jump into the next floor. Um, I, I actually, you know what? I don't think I ever talked about this jump that I keep doing that I'm using to avoid the, the holy mountain collapse. So basically the angle that you're looking at is that you want to like keep your head under like this little path here and you don't want to go beyond, um, this line here. Like you, you can stand on the ledge here with like polymorph, for example. Um, but I, I could also use this to, to sneak out and like stand right here. Just be really careful because um, you, you could definitely get murdered by an enemy if you do this technique. But uh, this is another way to get out of the, the Holy Mountain. And uh, yeah, to, to line up the shot, I, I find a lot of people collapse when they're going back in. So basically, uh, all you have to do is make sure you let go of your jump button as you shoot. And then you'll drop down in every time. If you hold spacebar or W or whatever you use as you're going up, you'll often bump your head up and ruin everything it's, it's a it's a common one i've seen it happen many a time but yeah it, it's it's pretty easily avoidable as long as you just do it the the correct way uh we're definitely going to take a spark trigger for now um it's it's just nice to have it's a good spell let's be real um so if i wanted to like min max my damage i might consider using the spark bolt trigger but honestly for now are so we're, we're so accurate with the current spells that we're abusing that uh, I don't really see any re real need to. If we wanted to, like, get the spitter bolt involved, then maybe I'd consider using some li something like that. But for now, we're looking pretty good. Alrighty. W with repulsion, I'm feeling fairly safe on this floor. There's not really too much we have to worry about. I'm going to be clearing to the right along the top here. Uh, for, for two different reasons. There there's formations that um, enemies can really get the jump on you with. If you um, are clearing toward the right, and if you clear on the top, there's basically just less directions enemies can come from to get you, which is really, really nice. I'm going to bring this wand with me because it's got the lovely uh, homing, which is fantastic. This is a little bit of a risky maneuver, but um, if you have a teleport wand and uh, a little bit of digging, you can teleport into this area from underneath. Just have to get the angle right. Give it a, a, a moment here. Sometimes it can be a little bit unagreeable. But we're in. Um, but this skull is pretty scary to me. So I'm going to Ambrosia up here to, to get a little bit of space and deal with that. There we go. Obviously I had Luminous Drills, so there were other ways I could have gotten in there as well. Um, slime Mist is not the, the mist we're looking for. Reduce Recharge is good, but we've already got a Luminous Drill. Um... I'm going to leave that for now, but I'll keep the Reduce Recharge in mind, because I, I think that that's a pretty good spell to have in a pinch. I'm going to go ahead and strip everything off of this wand that I want, because uh, it's a Shuffle Yes, and I don't really want it in my life. But I do want the spells, so let's do that really quick. I'm going to get rid of Arrow, because it's outlived its usefulness. Triple Spell is pretty nice, and um, I can just put that on here with this one as well. And uh, it won't add any extra spread, and the mana cost is so minimal that it won't even make a difference. So that's pretty nice. Um, theoretically, I could use that as my teleport wand for the time being. And that would be a little bit faster. Why don't I do that? I don't really use Shuffle Yes wands nearly as much as I should. They are occasionally pretty darn useful. I could even leave all the extra teleports on there if I want, but um, I don't think I will. I'll just leave it to a single one. That way I don't have to worry about uh, multicasting them. And, uh, costing myself a lot of mana. Alrighty. So this dude heals from freezing damage. As you can see by those little green sparks. If you ever see those little green sparks, those ones there, 
uh, you know the enemy is healing from whatever you're doing. Um, there, there's quite a few different enemies that actually heal from uh, damaging attacks these days. And, um, oh my goodness, that is where repulsion is really good. <laughs> that was not the greatest play by me. I might have been able to dodge that without repulsion, but thankfully repulsion's just ridiculously good taking care of Uko for me. Um, by the way, we, we've made it to the far right, so now we can go back up now if we, if we would like and get a little bit more powerful. There's another Uko. Thankfully, uh, enemies are working against one another. I, I think I just shot one of the rock spirits this thing fired out, which is pretty darn handy, I must say. But yeah, we're, we're in pretty good health for fighting Pyramid Boss, and we've got Ambrosia to work with as well. I'm going to go back up and do that. Uh, we, we've got digging, we've got Ambrosia, we've got pretty much everything we need to have a pretty clean fight. Um, do I have anything for uh, Pit Boss? Kind of. I, I could go with a Saw Blade Orbit and Personal Fireball, or, or sorry, Personal uh, Gravity Field and go for something with that. But it would be a little bit of a longer fight, and that sounds scary to me. Uh, I would like to get this on my first try. I, I do like to be as consistent as I can in Noita a lot of the time. Especially if I'm doing like a, a tutorial style gameplay. I think that just makes sense. Alrighty. You can see that torch has already done damage to me twice, by the way. If you're paying close attention. It does uh, occasionally do some annoying stuff for us. We're gonna take this heart. Because that's just extra HP. And I don't care about giving the boss extra HP at all. Um, because I'm, I'm gonna be able to kill him regardless of how many orbs he has. It, it just, it won't matter in the end. Because Noita is a power fantasy, and you can just be infinitely strong. It's kinda goofy. Alrighty. So we're, we're gonna leave the orb up top, because there, since we've got Ambrosia, a heart mage could spawn in, and we could get, like, a thousand health or something stupid, uh, right off the bat here, which would be pretty nice. Uh, we're, we're in pretty good shape. We're going to make sure we clear around this room before we activate the boss. Note that there are some pretty scary enemies that can spawn in this place. Um, most of the mages can spawn in here, as well as a Sur Uko. Uh, or even an enemy that you can't even deal damage to. Oh, I think I saw a mage. That's a twitchy. He's not who I'm looking for. I'm just taking a, a quick gander around, see who we've got kicking around. Doesn't seem to be anyone of intrigue just yet. Whoa. There we go. These, these masks are always a little bit annoying, but looks like we didn't find anyone too important. So we'll just go ahead and do the fight. I'll, I know now that I can just murder the, the boss. Uh, we could look even more thoroughly throughout the entire pyramid. There's a pretty decent chance of finding the mage we're after. Rip scorpions. R.I.P. little scorps. They didn't deserve that. So yeah, we're just gonna stay away from this guy until he's ready to open up, and then we'll do a murder. We don't really have anything too spectacular. But this boss actually can be freeze-kicked, so I'll, I'll do that. That sounds fun. I, if he doesn't run away, there we go. <laughs> Pretty rare for bosses to be able to be freeze-kicked. Um, but look at that. That is a beaut right there. Hooey! That's a nice wand. Very nice. That is just significantly better than everything else I have. And uh, we're going to take this spell, because it's pretty good. And uh, we don't have any damage modifiers yet, so we'll go ahead and take random damage. It's not too bad. It's a decent spell, all things considered. Whoa. Once again, repulsion keeps me safe from that guy, but still a little bit spooky. Let's go ahead and grab our, our full heal. And we'll carry on our merry way. And by full heal, I mean a little bit of extra HP. 260 max HP is looking pretty good. Um, so one thing I could do here is I do have Luminous Drill, so I can dig up. Um, I need to ask myself if I have a consistent way to kill the Alchemist, and the answer currently is... I'm looking at Magic Missile, that's about it. Magic Missile is my consistent kill, um, which isn't super great, to be honest. I don't feel very confident in that boss kill. Um, you might be looking at the saw blade orb and being like, oh, that does a lot of damage. It's funny because Alchemist is completely immune to slicing damage. So, yeah, that's not going to work. That one would not function. And we do have copy thrice. Hmm. 
trying to think of what sort of crazy stuff we could pull. Let's let's drop down into the Holy Mountain and uh, just do a, a brief bit of planning and see if we can't come up with something. There, there could be something in the Holy Mountain even that uh, I'm not thinking of. So let's take a quick look. Horizontal barrier. <laughs> uh, well, I, I guess this is a don't do what I do situation. We're going to give it a try. I, th I think that sounds pretty fun. Horizontal Barrier is one of the few spells, actually one of the, one of a handful of spells that uh, Master, or sorry, that the Alchemist doesn't know what to do with. And basically what the Alchemist Shield does is it takes the projectile and then it adds um, a flat amount of explosive and projectile damage and then fires it back in the direction that it uh, was shot from. And, um, yeah, it's, it's pretty simple, but if it doesn't know what the original projectile was, it'll turn it into a magic missile. And, uh, the funny thing is, is that, uh, those projectiles are pretty likely to hit the alchemist itself, which means that if you spawn a whole bunch of them, like with horizontal barrier, we're going to be able to just completely explode the boss, which is uh, really funny and, uh, definitely fucking dangerous. Don't, don't do this. Maybe. Unless you have repulsion and a one-up to get away with it. Um, yeah. So th this this should hurt real bad. In theory. Of course it won't show on that, but... I assure you, this is this is a very dangerous and strong wand. Um, let's go ahead and put our freeze charge away for the time being. And I can leave some spark bolts behind, because I guarantee you we're not going to be needing those for long. Um, if I'm doing inventory management, I shouldn't be hovering this wand. I should be hovering anything else, because this wand can... And will kill me very, very quickly. Um, let's go ahead and simplify this down. I, I think we're getting rid of most of our spark bolts at this point. Because we're going to be transitioning over to a spicier wand. Probably. I, I could see myself using notes here. This this looks like a really good example for a note run, actually. Um, so let, let's maybe look toward that. Yeah, that that makes sense to me. I'm, I'm going to put uh, a couple more uh, sparks on this thing. By the way, I, I guess one thing I haven't explained with this wand build is that uh, because we've got copy three spells uh, here, three random spells, and horizontal pa uh, barrier is the only thing in, at the, the end here, every other spell has been discarded, so um, it will guaranteed hit the horizontal barrier every time, which is really, really handy and good. Alrighty, uh, let's go one and two. And let's just go ahead and do this. And we've got a little bit of... That's that's perfect. That's exactly what we need. Okay. So, we've got our Diggy Dig. We've got secondary Diggy Dig. We've got our damage. Let's, let's go ahead and test this thing. Let's take this off because it's limited shots. You can see those shots will uh, home in pretty cleanly. Um, but this is definitely a scary one to shoot, that's for certain. I'm going to... I don't know what slot I want to keep it in. I'm going to keep it in slot 4, because I don't really normally shoot with slot 4. And I'll, I'll move it when the time is right. So we're going to have to anger Steven here. Thankfully, we've got a means to do that. Just go ahead and drop that tablet on his head. And I'm quite confident we're going to be powerful enough to handle Steven from this point onward pretty cleanly. And uh, we'll also go and grab our full heal before we kill Alchemist, because... I, I, I'm honestly a little bit afraid with 100 health going into this fight. We do have a 1-up, but, you know, it's it's better not to use those things. They're, they're very, very nice as, like, a, a comfy, cozy little thing to hold on to. Keeps, keeps you safe. Let's go ahead and climb up here. Um, I guess, once again, I'll explain some of my, my wand decision making here. So this Luminous Drill is up at the front, reducing recharge time by 0.17. And we've got a 0.38 recharge time. So uh, we get down to uh, 0.34 recharge time uh, reduced. So we've got a still still a bit of recharge time to deal with. But we don't have the mana to sustain perfect uh, one frame firing anyway. So we don't really have that much to worry about. But basically these double spells are all zero cost. And light is also only one cost. 
And, um, yeah, it's, it's basically like we're, we cast Luminous Drill and these all draw into the Luminous Drill again. And they, they don't overdraw because you can't, like, loop a wand forever because that would be really, really ridiculous and, um, break the game in a lot of different ways. But that was kind of a thing for, like, a brief time called 404 looping with specifically wand refresh. But, uh, that doesn't exist anymore. So don't worry about it. Unless you're going back and playing older versions of Noita, which I kind of would recommend. At some point, maybe we'll we'll play some old versions of Noita and show off some builds that don't exist anymore. I think that would be kind of cool. Uh, let's run on... Oh, oh, hi. We're just going to do a little, little quick murder. And this is why we kept the, the torch on this wand, so that way we could see. We're, we're going to grab this one first, and then we're going to go grab the full heal. And I will be very, very happy with my usage of Dark Cave here. That's some good stuff. And uh, now we can just dig on out and around. I don't want to go up through there because th that just leads to the, the risk of having to deal with some really annoying enemies. And there's no reason to do that. I'd, I'd rather just bypass them entirely. We should have a relatively easy time digging up through this wall here. If I had to guess. Once again, the, the lighter material tends to be a lot easier to dig through. So we can just punch through there. And there's a decent chance of us having to deal with some acid spawners. We're just going to keep those in mind and bypass them entirely here. That's the game plan. Alrighty. So, got a bit of a hill here. But we're lining up with this building. We're going to go straight down. And uh, we've got Ambrosia and everything. I'm going to go ahead and put my wand into position. And, um, yeah, we're, we're more or less ready. My, my biggest fear is having, like, a random extra dude in the fight. Like that guy. Um, so yeah, there, there's a pretty good amount of damage. That guy's immune to all damage currently, which is a little bit alarming. But we're gonna be very liberal with our usage of Ambrosia. And, uh, there we go. There's the boss kill. Uh, I was in zero danger the entire time. Um, obviously, between Repulsion and my Teleport, I could have, like, dodged everything. But I figure, why not just use the Ambrosia? It makes me a lot safer. Alrighty. We're leaving the key this time around. That's just an extra quest that I don't really feel like doing right now. We've got other things on the, the menu. But now that we've got uh, Omega, Phi, and Wand Refresh, we're gonna have a pretty easy time making whatever we want unlimited and going pretty crazy with that. I'm going to go ahead and put away my, my danger wand into slot 4, where I, I, I pretty much never ever pull out my slot 4 wand, so I'm happy to, to leave it there. Let's go ahead and grab a D-sharp EG. Um, I need to get rid of a spell, and magic missiles, not really that interesting to me. Uh, this wand can be pretty good if you get a lot of add manas, but uh, we do not have that. Also a good storage wand if you have increased mana. Note that you don't actually need the cantil for, um, what do you call it? You don't need the, the Cantile. You know what? I'm actually going to bring the Cantile because I do kind of need it for the quest line I'm going to do. But you don't need it to cast any of the, the musical songs, which is really nice. So you can just completely bypass the need for that. Let's see if we can sneak through here. There we go. We already have the, the Luminous Drill digging, so I don't really have to worry about that. So there's one more boss that is like a bit of a threat uh, that we want to kill in the early game here. But I don't really think that we're equipped to do so, so I think I'm going to bypass it entirely and uh, not bother. We've got everything we really want uh, anyway, outside of uh, consistent digging, which we could get through Matosade, which is the, the boss spell, but I'm not going to worry about that. I'm going to go ahead and head straight down to Hisi base now and hope we get a decent chop, and uh, we'll see how that looks. I could grab another orb over here, but uh, our HP levels are looking pretty good. So I don't really feel the need to. We're, we're in decent shape. I'd like to come back up and look around in this floor some more once we've got a, uh, a safer wand built out. Uh, these guys can't shoot straight up, so that, that's like an easy thing to deal with them. The Heesey Lobbers and the, uh, the Heesey Gunners, uh, as well as the Heesey Moms. None, none of those can shoot straight up, which is pretty handy. Okay, so we've got a wand over here. Snipers, however, have no problem shooting wherever the hell they want. Go ahead and dive in, and keep in mind we do have Steven, so we're going to deal with him quickly. That was an up kick that I did there. I actually have a, a separate guide on that. It's not in the tablet kicking, because it's newer tech, but it's very, very handy. Um, we got some pretty cool stuff. 
We got a lot of cool stuff, actually. This is fun. Short range homing. We're going to be able to do some stuff, that's for sure. Hmm. Alrighty. Well, I think it's time to upgrade our wand. Uh, right now, it is pretty lethal to the player, so I'd like to change that. And uh, first things first is we're going to have to take that off. And they upgraded the, the stability on this thing, huh? Let's find out, shall we? Interested to see how that looks. Grab one of these, and uh, we're going to be using random damage. That's something that we can play around with. I think I'm going to use Omega here. And uh, we'll we'll triple the amount of spells that we have on our wand. And the short range homing is going to be the primary damage dealer of this setup. Um, I could also have personal gravity field on here, which would be kind of funny. A little bit unnecessary because we're going to be doing so much damage anyway. And freeze charge is just free damage as well. Hmm. It'd be nice to have a light on this thing so that way I can see where uh, in the dark. So that's kind of cool. Uh, I'll buy another light, even if it is a little expensive. That's not a super big deal. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be like a single shot, big power wand. That's that's going to be the idea. Um, and because of that, I'd like to be able to shoot through walls. Because that, that would help out with killing things. And uh, let's go ahead and see what else we need to do here. I'm going to leave this wand in here. Because the, the quest that I will need this wand for... Uh, it, it, this is the perfect spot for it, so that'll work out nicely. All right, so let's plan out our wand. Luminous drill is to shoot through walls. Spark bolt trigger is to give me some distance. Light is to make it so I can see on my shots. Freeze charge is to deal some damage and stun lock enemies, but the circle of stillness is mostly going to do that anyway. Uh, let's go ahead and put all of our modifiers over here, so this is easy to, easy to read. So you can see the current build is one, two, three, and then it, it fails because the wand isn't built properly. So we need to go ahead and put a triple spell on here. And uh, now this is going what? So this is uh, one, two, and then three. And this is one, two, and then three. And this is grabbing the, uh, the copy random spells and Omega. And I don't care if this over grabs because it, it's not really going to make that big of a difference at the end of the day. This is going to cost my entire mana bar because copy three random spells is going to cost 309 times, so 900, which is uh, more than I have, but it's going to cast the full three anyway. Um, and yeah, it's, it's going to be pretty good. Uh, it we'll have like a bunch of really, really strong uh, circle of stillness. Note that random damage can uh, be minus 60, minus 40, minus 20, 0, 20, 40, 60, and 80. That's the, the damage range that it has. Um, so it's it's more likely to deal more damage than it is to deal no damage. Um, but sometimes it will make my projectiles do zero damage. However, we've got the freeze charge to make it so we always have some form of damage unless it's fighting a robot. Um, but that said, uh, the, the, the multiplication on this will make it so it does absolutely insane damage when it shoots. And the short range homing is going to be tripled. And, uh, well, I mean, everything on the wand is going to be triple. Let's let's just go ahead and shoot it. And uh, hopefully that all makes sense to you, to you guys. Oh, my God. <laughs> what have I done? Alrighty. Um, about that performance. Whoopsie. <laughs> oh, no. Okay. Um, hmm. Hmm. Not entirely sure about that performance buff they were talking about. Gonna gonna have to cast a little sus on that, if I'm being honest. <laughs> this is so bad. Oh my god. Um... <laughs> this is really bad. I didn't think it would be this bad. I'll be honest. This is terrible. Hang on, I'm just gonna pause the recording until this shot goes away. I think it's partly because, like, it doubled on top of the double from me shooting a statue. I'm just gonna pause and be right back once it once this thing is done lagging. Alright, we're back. <laughs> that, that was kind of bad. I'm gonna try taking the freeze charge off and hopefully that works. Otherwise, I'm probably going to end up having to pivot the build a little bit. Um, yeah, they, they, I think we generated so much of the, uh, the, the freezing stuff that it just caused problems. So at this point, I've, I've got Luminous Drill to dig through here, so I don't really have to worry about, uh, oh my god. 
I don't really have to worry about, um, you know, going over and around. So that hopefully that works. All right, so let let's get murdering, I guess. Okay, <laughs> that's all right. That none of these are doing damage, but there we go. Okay, as you can see, on occasion, these aren't always killing enemies. But that's okay. It's 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 working pretty well so far. At the very least, it's illuminating the situation. All right, they're they're all dead. This is this is fun. This is a pretty okay wand. It's not the worst. It's definitely not the best, but it is funny. And uh, you know, so sometimes that's what's most important in Noita, as far as I'm concerned, at least. There we go. You can see on occasion uh, these will do damage, and when it does, it seems pretty good. It's weird that they're only uh, hitting like a single time. Oh, here we go. These ones are multi-hitting. I wonder why that one's not hitting multiple times. We are kind of slowing down the game a little bit with this. It's a little bit more slow down than I was anticipating. Um, okay, so now we're out of freeze charges, which is fine because we've got Omega, which is actually where all my freeze charges are coming from. So that, that shouldn't be too much of an issue. Concentrated mana is kind of cute there, but not really what I'm after. Holy moly. This this wand is, is very fun. I'm I'm enjoying this one. I do apologize about the slowdown, but I, I feel like that's just part of the beauty of a, a good build on Noita. If you're not lagging, are you even ridiculously strong? That's that's my question. Let's go ahead and grab one of these. You can see these are stuck in the wall here. Taking the freeze charge off helped a lot. That that much is clear. It looks like the um, the secret shop is on the far left this time around, so we'll, we'll head over that way instead. Um, there, there's a pretty high chance of a wand spawn over here. It looks like the, the dude picked it up. It might even be a guaranteed wand spawn location there. We're going to blow all that stuff up because that is scaring me. Uh, it's a nice looking wand, a no shuffle, but it's a little small. Hopefully some good spells. Yeah, it's got phasing. That's nice. Phasing is good. Happy to have that. Okay, let's just blow everything up. There we go. You can see the, the critical hits coming from these are just, like, absurd because of the way the spark bolts stack up. It's doing some pretty respectable damage overall. The nice thing about the, um... The short-range homing is, like, I can just, like, redirect things after... Word with my, um, repulsion, and that'll just, like, go and kill everything. Let's go ahead and fire off a shot there. This is a nice looking wand. It's got quite a few decent spells on it. Hollow Egg is pretty useful. Luminous Drill is nice. Uh, Freezing Gaze could be pretty darn helpful as a damage dealer. Um, and Thunder Charge could be good for long term. We're probably going to take that, uh, that wand in the near future here. In fact, I think I'm going to go down and come back up. The existence of that broken wand is very interesting to me. We're definitely going to go and activate that. I'm going to safely place my tablet here, because everything else I feel like could break. <laughs> I don't want to lose any of my potions, as they're all fairly important to me. I do enjoy having the things that I currently have access to. Ooh, we've got another wand over here to look at as well. This has been a pretty good floor so far. Uh, maybe like a little bit. Oh my god, it's beautiful. We got mana. We got mana as well. We're going to have so many good things to work with here. I'm going to change my wand around on the next floor here because we're, we're lagging a little bit hard with this one. And I would like to reduce that effect a little bit. So uh, let's drop down and grab phasing out of here. I'm going to kill uh, the, the, the dude who comes to attack me here. The, the Steven. And then we'll go from there. What do we have? Triplicates. Triplicates could be fun. Where? Goodbye. <laughs> That's pretty good. I guess I'll take another extra item in Holy Mountain. If I have to go to Parallel Worlds to find the items that I want, then it should be a lot easier to find them if I've got a bunch of them stacked up like this. So that that's kind of the hope. Um, we're going to need to dig back up and... Is there anything that I'd like to swap my build around to? 
Not really. I'm pretty happy with this for now. I If we go back up and gather some of the spells that I'm missing, um, we'll be in really good shape, I think. So we'll, we'll do that, and then I'll, I'll make some pivots to my, my builds. So there's two wands up there that I want, um, which means we're going to have to make a couple of trips, but that's okay. Noita is a game of patience a lot of the time. And while that isn't always my forte with all the, the speed running I've done in this game, kind of wearing down my patience in some ways, I, I feel like it means that I can just do things a little bit more quickly a lot of the time. Here we go. I've got to be careful not to set that all on fire, because that would cause me problems. There we go. That's, that's a couple of dead people. There's there's a couple more. You can see the, the damage rolls are quite variable on uh, this wand you get some really really high damage sometimes and other times it does literally nothing <laughs> it's kind of goofy let's see if we can jump up through here so th there's pretty much two wands that I, I found so far on this floor that i'm interested in this is one of them and then the uh the mana wand is the other one so we'll, we'll grab this one drag it down really quick and we'll grab uh this and we'll, we'll drop the stuff that i i think I might come back for Maybe we should go Freezing Gaze for a while. I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to pivot over to Freezing Gaze. And um, that should hopefully be a slight help. We're going to dump this wand entirely. So the beauty of Freezing Gaze is that, um, you know, it, it just has a lot of projectiles. Which means that it it scales pretty darn well with a lot of stuff. We're going to drink a... Ooh, I, I'm surprised that that didn't bring me up. going to try and get another teleport up here. There we go. That is the direction that I'm trying to go. We'll grab that other wand. Once we have mana, we should have a much better system for digging. Uh, I don't I don't think I'm even going to bother using my increased mana on uh, my damage wand because we're, we're doing single shot strats. Make sure we reclaim our tablet here as well. But yeah, I, I, I think that this run is a, a really good example of why it's a good thing that mana has been nerfed because... I feel like you can just get so many manas a lot of the time that uh, you just turn everything into a machine gun. And uh, honestly, this does not need to be a machine gun, the build that I'm currently using. It's it's just unnecessary. So if we do this, then we should be able to shoot really quick with that. And uh, we can put phasing on here as well so that we've got some distance. And uh, we'll just dump this because that's, that's also pretty not useful for the most part. But, um, yeah, that, that's that's a nice little upgrade. It should be pretty helpful. Let's go back up and check out the, the side shop. And uh, then I guess we're pretty much done here with this floor. I'm going to be a little bit afraid of uh, some of the stuff kicking around here. All right, my wand doesn't lag anymore. At least not, not permanently, just for the moment I shoot it. Which is better, for certain. Um, I, I do miss being able to shoot around corners and uh, in, and through walls, but this will certainly do the trick. You can see, as long as I've got enough mana to, to get to the copy three spells, by the way, this wand will shoot at its full power no matter what. Even if it's missing, like, a ton of the mana, it's still going to get that full damage. Because, um, the, the copy three random spells is forcing Omega to be cast three times no matter what. So that, that's like a really, really nice um, little influence that copy three random spells has um, over, like, for example, a divide by. You know, div divide buys wouldn't have that same potential. So we're, we're, we're really making the most out of this spell currently. There we go. Just punching through everybody with this. Use a little bit more of our, uh, our luminous drill. This is just fun as well. Phasing is a, a great way to increase lifetime, by the way. It's not just for, like, the super crazy advanced wands. It can be pretty helpful on its own. There we go. <laughs> Look at the spike of blood that got generated there. That's so cool. This is such a great wand. Such a fun one. Rip in peace to that sniper. There we go. Let's see what goodies we have here. Damage up. Um, some consistent damage would be pretty nice. Uh, the... The flies are pretty good, but they're a little bit on the specific side. 
I'm gonna go ahead and dig over to the um, the hourglass, or sorry, d dig over to the um, the eye room. So th th this hourglass here, if you pour teleportadium into it, uh, it'll always take you to the far left, and uh, the far left will have this eye, and the eye has a bunch of uh, spells that can be literally anything. They can be of any tier. And uh, that means that you can get some really, really cool stuff out of it. It's not always, but like a lot of the time. So I would say that it's highly worth visiting. If, if you've got the power level for it, you should just go for it. It's it's extremely nice to, to head over and peep this. Right now, the primary spell I'm looking for actually is still Homebringer, but like a black hole would be good. Any Anything that helps me dig would be very welcome. As you can see, my digging is a, like a, a little bit... It, it's fine. Like, it's it's serviceable, but it could be a lot better. Horizontal path is nice. Um, Omega saw blades, funny. I'm going to take it. I'm going to take horizontal path as well. I'm not going to take the portal because uh, the portal, uh, or the, the hourglass has a single event. And uh, whichever event plays first will be the, the only event that will go off. So the three different events that it can do, if you fill it with blood, it'll give you a bunch of gold. If you fill it with teleport, it'll give you the teleport. If you destroy it, it'll cause an earthquake and kill you. Uh, and whenever you teleport, there's like a crumble effect that'll happen. And uh, there's a strong chance that it'll crumble a piece of the hourglass, which will result in the destruction of it and probably an earthquake landing on your head. So yeah, we're, we're going to completely bypass that by not going through the portal at all. That guy's got a wand. Andy managed to shoot it. That could have been so much worse. Recoil! I already have teleport, so I don't care. But that's almost nice. There's a wand. Let's take a look at this really quick. Nothing good, and another treasure chest. Lots, lots of loot on this floor. I don't really spend too much time on this floor normally. Because the explosives are so dang dangerous. But, um, we're really powerful on this run, so... I'm not too worried about it, to be honest. Alright. Back on the trail. Is there anything else that I want to mess with here? Uh, a horizontal path would be some nice consistent damage output potentially. Although, of course, this is going to likely wipe out that damage a lot of the time. We, we could make our wand more consistent by taking this off at this point. But uh, I'm going to leave it as is. And let's see if there's anything else we can do for payload. I guess the triplicates could be kind of good. But um, I'm pretty happy with what we've got. In the future, we might want to add in, like, Omega, uh, or add in, like, uh, Wand Refresh Omega and have, like, a bunch of spells behind the Wand Refresh, so that way I can make them only the cost of the Omega. But for now, I'm pretty happy with what I've got. Oh my goodness. So the, that that doubled the, the shots, by the way, if you're wondering why that looked so crazy. That's what happened there. Uh, we could do Mists. That could be kind of cool. I haven't done a Blood Mist Wand in a long time. Let's add, like, one mist on. How about it? Seems pretty good. I think that this will still run exactly the same, so we don't need to worry about changing it out. And that wand is pretty poor, so we won't worry about that either. One thing that you might be noticing is that um, I always have my wands on pretty much the exact same spot. So, like, you'll, you'll know uh, which wand you're using based on which hotkey it's on. So, wand 2 is always teleport. If, or always some form of movement if I have it. And before then, it's always some sort of explosive. And wand one is always my damage wand. And wand three is always... Uh, it's either like a limited digging or it's my uh, consistent digging if I've got um, a teleport wand already. And I've, I've just got like all these little uh, rules in place in my own head. So that way... I don't have to panic in combat, and I know exactly what I'm going to be using every time I hit a button. And, uh, you might have noticed how I didn't mention button 4. That's because I don't really use it unless it's a very, very specific situation that I want to be actively thinking about. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's definitely one of those things where it's, it's nice to have a button where it's like, don't touch this or you're gonna die. It, it'd be kind of nice if, uh, there was like a fifth wand slot that is, like, in your backpack, and you, you can't, like, activate it without actively moving it out of your backpack or something. I think that'd be kind of cool. Um, or, like, a magic pocket, I guess, would make more sense for the character design. By the way, if it wasn't obvious, we're going after Dragon, because Dragon 
is uh, just easy prey and lots and lots of good stuff. In worst case scenario, he manages to bite me, but I'll have iframes and live anyway, so... Not like I have anything to really be afraid of. There he goes. Uh, that's a relatively small wand. Hopefully it's got some decent stuff on it. It's... it's okay. It's alright. Definitely better than my teleport wand, at least. So we'll probably transfer over to that. And look at that. The physics is broken here. It might have something to do with the craziness of my wand, if I had to guess. But, um, yeah, it's, it's definitely a spicy setup we've got going here. There's a, a drill and a healing bolt. Those are both quite tempting, because unlimited healing is good. And drill is ludicrously strong. It's, it's just nice to have access to, so we're probably going to go down and come back up for that. Uh, we should be dealing with the uh, Scode by now, and, uh, yeah, he's not really that big of a problem for me, thankfully. But, uh, you know, definitely something to be a little afraid of, depending on how strong you are at, at the, the given time in a run. Uh, Tentacle is looking pretty tempting here. But it's not going to be that good on this, the problem. We'll, we'll play around with it, how about that? Uh, this thing, I, I, I like the quad spell, I'm going to dump all the missiles. We can, we can do other stuff that, that, that doesn't involve missiles. And that'll be nice. Let's go ahead and do that. And we'll put Wand Refresh on here. And uh, just, like, start storing stuff. Because I, I could really use the extra inventory space. There we go. And let's go ahead and grab this tentacle. I want to see what happens if I put this on here. I have a strong feeling it's going to do literally nothing. But I'd like to confirm that by trying it out. Oh my... Well, it didn't quite do nothing. I'm gonna run around with that for a little while, because theoretically that, that should do the good. And it, it should be a freezing melee instant kill on quite a few enemies. And that sounds pretty good. Let's go ahead and dig up here again. Um, once again, our, our digging is like pretty darn abysmal for where we are in the game. I need to take the torch off this thing. It's causing me all sorts of problems. We're not explosion immune, but explosive projectile is obviously an amazing spell. Uh, reduced recharge is really not that necessary with the amount of luminous drills that we've got. Um, let's go ahead and get rid of this torch because it's really done its job. That wand's pretty good, but not really what I need. And it looks like we burnt away most of the uh, mana, or so, sorry, most of the teleportadium, which means we're going to have to dig out the old-fashioned way. Um, these, uh, these eyes, by the way, power the, the portals, so if you destroy them... Uh, then you don't have another way down. And th there can be, like, some problems with that for sure. I accidentally jumped in there, but I was able to teleport back out just in time. Thankfully. It's really nice that that's even a thing. But, uh, it, it is kind of a tricky timing to get. I've definitely messed up and gone through portals a few too many times in the past. That happens to me on occasion. That bouncing spells is a little bit cooler than it used to be, but it's still really not that good. Definitely gonna take this thing, and um, we might swap over to Bubble Spark Trigger over the um, the the Spark Bolt Trigger. It's kind of a tempting option because keep in mind this short range homing. I can just place it over here, and because the Omega is in this spell block, it's going to take the short range homing and apply it to this as well. And that means it'll be applied in two places at once instead of just the singular place, which is just better. And with this setup, now we can unlimitedly heal, which is really nice. And that means that there's no reason not to pick this up right away. Um, Digging bolt is pretty nice. I will add it onto this one so it can shoot a little bit faster because that seems helpful. I'll keep the spark bolt trigger for later, just in case I want to go back for it. You never know. Maybe, maybe I'll decide that that is the, the correct option after all. And, um, yeah, that's looking pretty good. Let's let's do a murder real quick here. That's looking good. It's some effective murder, that's for certain. And they've made a lovely new path for me here. I have the problem that I don't really have the, the greatest damage output currently. Um, but between freezing and, um, that's really scary. Oh man, that is extra spooky. I'm not a fan of that. Can we, uh, can we see that stop? That'd be great. Okay, I think it's done. I'm gonna go check out the wand really quick. Let's see what that dude had. 
Hey, it's a mana. It's a lot of fire right there. Thankfully, we have unlimited healing. All right, so we've got another mana to work with. Remember, this is one of the spells that was nerfed in terms of its chance of showing up, so, you know, th th thank you, Nala. <laughs> I guess it's, it's still, still pretty common at the end of the day. I'll take it. While I am happy that it's nerfed, it is, like, one of the best spells in the game, so I'm, I'm happy that the only thing that they nerfed about it was the chance to find it. Because obviously if I'm finding it this much on, like, a normal run, you know, clearly it's not that rare. That was a bit of an awkward path, but we're okay. No, oh, I was gonna say no damage taken, but then we took some more damage. It's a bit of a scary wand right there. I'd rather not interact with that if I don't have to. Um... I'm thinking it might be time to go do a a murder on the the big boss on the 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 pit boss so that way I can get Matosade and travel around a little bit more cleanly. I think that would be pretty nice. Um but in the meantime, let's take a look at some of these other wands. I feel like I've gone down. Oh, hey, there it is. That's the black hole I was looking for. <laughs> How lucky. It was- it's one of those things where sometimes you just- just you get the, the feeling you gotta go back up. I didn't really want to go all the way down to Vault. And now we don't have to, thankfully. Um, Phi will make for a fine caster of Black Holes, and now we're gonna be able to move around pretty cleanly. I think the next goal is gonna be going to Parallel Worlds for Homebringer really quick here, because that would be really, really nice to have, that's for certain. That would certainly make my life a lot easier. Um, we've got a triple spell here that we can add on to the mix, so that's a one, one, two, and this is one, two, three. And, uh, we don't want phasing on there anymore because that's gonna mess with our black holes pretty severely. And, uh, the red glimmer on there is gonna make it look a little funky, but that's okay. It will function all the same. That was a nice shot right there. Um, so yeah, we're, we're gonna go all the way back up and, uh, see what we can do. Because we are... Missing some core items for our quest line. And, uh, yeah, we, we, we don't need to get that overpowered, you know? I'd, I, I'm happy to get overpowered for the run, but, like, you know, they, they, you don't need to be the, the strongest thing on Earth. It's just a matter of, like, me not finding the loot that I wanted. So, like, really the game is doing this to itself. This isn't my fault. This is the game's fault. Let's go ahead and jump on up here. Ah! Whoops. Little little explosion there. Little little hubris check right there, for sure. <laughs> Should be a little bit more careful, I suppose. Let's uh let's not forget that the game is in charge at the end of the day. So yeah, we don't really need to kill the pit boss on this run. And uh now that we've got black hole, I really don't feel the need to. I was considering it because I'm like, oh man, I could really use some sort of consistent digging, but now that we've got black hole. We don't have to waste our time with any silly luminous drill wand, imagine that. Uh, note that some other really good wands for jumping to parallel worlds would include something like, um... Uh, Crown to Sand would be really good. You could also use, um, Omega Saw Blade with Nala or with the uh, Orbiting Pat, uh, a True Orbit, which is one of the new spells. You could use, uh, a, like, Gigas Oblade Orbit if you really needed to in a pinch on, like, a machine gun wand with, like, spark bolts. That would be pretty effective. But yeah, there, there, there's, like, quite a few different strategies. <clears throat> I guess I should briefly talk about the setup of this wand. This is a very- this is, like, mostly storage, uh, but also partially convenience, where if I wanted to take the black hole and the thigh off, I could go back to my Luminous Drill build really quickly. That's pretty much the only purpose for it being the way that it is. Um, but we, we get to reduce a lot of the cast delay thanks to the Luminous Drills. And that means that I can shoot a lot faster, which is nice. I'm going to open up as much space here as I can. Because if you're touching the Curse Rock directly, it deals more damage to you than if you just take uh, touch the, the barrier. Um, because there's like an aura, right? And then there's even more damage that happens if you're touching it directly. So, what you want to do, ideally, is only to have the aura dealing damage to you. Um, 
because yeah, it hurts. It hurts real bad. And we're gonna use some ambrosia, and I'll, I'll as long as you're teleporting, uh, you can see that stain stays pretty high. And uh, yeah, that's that's how you get through parallel worlds extremely consistently. Uh, you might be asking, what if you don't have black holes? And the answer is, you know, those other options that I talked about earlier. Mato Sade being like the most consistent one because it spawns every single time. But you could even use the Earth Stone if you wanted. Uh, and that would be in a pretty a pretty effective method, albeit a little bit slow. But then all you'd need is like some super basic digging, which wouldn't be that bad at all. Be a pretty consistent one to get through. Also, one thing to note about parallel worlds is the uh, the boss clones that can appear spawn in the the sky and try to murder you. They don't spawn in the levels, so if, if you like go underground, you're pretty safe. But other than that, I'd recommend having some form of teleportation, just so you can outpace and dodge them pretty consistently. It, it helps a lot. But uh, you can see we didn't even encounter a single one this time, which is very convenient for me. Uh, we're we're going to go ahead and dive down, do a couple of uh, a sh shops, make sure you don't jump into the um, portal. Don't jump into the portal, this hammy's a little bit of a frick. Thankfully we are in side world still. Um, but yeah, don't dump, jump into the portal because that'll take you to main world. <laughs> and that's the opposite of what you're looking to do. It's not where you're trying to be in life. But yeah, we're here for perks. We're here for um, spells. So let, let's take a quick gander. I'm mostly after Homebringer or Swapper. Swapper doesn't really spawn in um, shops, to my knowledge. But it does spawn on wands, rarely, so we'll keep an eye out for it. And, um, yeah, we're, we're just gonna- we're gonna do a couple parallel worlds here, just to- just to see what we can get. I was hoping this Homebringer would show up a little bit faster than it has, but that's okay. You're alive, that's impressive. Owie. That hurts. Um, oof. Ow, oh, Hungry Ghost did some damage to me there. You gotta be careful with healing in Hungry Ghost. It's a good way to take some really significant, unnecessary damage. Pinpointer seems pretty nice here. I'm gonna take that. It increases the projectile speed of my shots, and it scales based on how many projectiles are paired together. And on top of that, it makes it so they are more accurate which is uh, probably the, the nicer part. But you can see those um, those tentacles were, were going very, very fast because of how many shots they were paired with, which is kind of neat. The repulsion is really what's cutting into my, my aim issues, though, at the end of the day, so not really too much I can do about that other than use it a little more efficiently. We've got buoyancy, which is what I really, really wanted. Um, that That's going to make the rest of this challenge a breeze. <laughs> So I'm happy to see that. And um, let's go ahead and take... I, do I care about any of these? Hmm. Unlimited spells would make it so Freezing Gaze is more consistent, but I could also just let this zero out and save myself 45 mana. I think Unlimited Spells is one of those things where it, it looks really good on paper, but then when you play with it, you realize that it's not necessarily always super good. That said, because I want unlimited buoyancy, I'm going to take it anyway. Just because it is pretty nice. You might be wondering why I'm not re-rolling, and that's because the re-roll value is getting really, really high, and it's getting to the point where I'm not going to be able to use it anyway. I'm going to buy these because they're on the cheap, and um, yeah. I, we'll, we'll do like a couple more uh, of these just, just to like see what other kind of goodies we can gather. But I, I think we're pretty much good to go. Hey, look, this is a, a, a similar build to the one that we found in the, the main world. Oof, that's a little bit of damage. Gotta be careful when you're just diving down haphazardly like this. I, I definitely take a little bit too many risks when I do that sort of thing. Hey, would you look at that? <laughs> I swear this is a random seed, okay? <laughs> this is completely random seed. Just... <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Listen. You, too, can get this lucky. All you have to do is play the game for 3,000 hours and then, like, go farm parallel worlds. Okay? That That's it. That's all you have to do. In fact, you don't even have to play the game for 3,000 hours. Just go to parallel worlds. You'll get, you'll get crazy shit. I guarantee it. Um, but yeah, I'll just do that now. And now I've got, like, way better healing. Chain spell's kind of hilarious. Um but not really what I'm after. I'm going to go ahead and grab this and 
Do we want to go kill another dragon? Of course we want to go kill another dragon. Why not? Why wouldn't we want to try and kill another dragon? Let's just run over there right now. Show them what for. What's this over here? It's an always cast wand. It's not a very good one, though. Always cast is weird. Ow! Hungry ghost, please! <laughs> that hurts! Hungry ghost is definitely a bit of a threat on this run. Y you could nullify the damage, the self-damage that he de deals to you via a uh, weakening curse glitch, which I'm sure will come up at some point on one of these runs. So, yeah, look forward to that, I suppose. Uh, we didn't kill him in one hit, which is a little alarming. I don't know what broke on my wand, but something definitely did. Um, we got Tentacle Timer. That's kind of nice. Could use that to our advantage. I guess we're going to do one more uh, down here, and then we'll we'll go back to main world. That seems good to me. You can see that that self-damage is relatively significant. Managed to get to the, the coveted 420 health. Uh, blaze it, I guess. Run! Run! Okay, here we go. Not too shabby. Laser eyes are not really my jam, to be honest. They're not that good. Hey! We can incurse. Well, I guess it's going to be this run, because why not? <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just speaking things into reality today. That It's it's one of those runs. Noita is voice activated, if you didn't know. Here it is. Yeah, we're we're gonna have a very fun time, I think. Let's let's get crazy. Let's let's get stupid. Why not? Um, okay, let, let's roll these one more time. And I will take a stainless armor, I guess. It's not too bad. And we don't have edit ones everywhere, which is a little annoying, but we do have We're we're gonna go get that it wants everywhere. That'll be fine. Okay. Let's go. Are we are we ready? That my brain is just like overloading with things that I want to do on this run right now. It's kind of wild. I don't know what what is my recording time at? I I haven't checked. Uh so we're we're an hour and a half into the run currently by the looks of it. That's not too bad. This has been a, a pretty good hour and a half. I hope I don't ever extend these too long for people to enjoy. Um maybe at some point I'll have to start adding in like, um, checkpoints or something for people. Is that something that you would be interested in? Please let me know in the comments down below if you would like me to timestamp the video in some way. Um, maybe, like, by power stage or, um, you know, it's like, oh, going to parallel world. You know, that, that sort of thing. Let me know. Let me know if that's something that interests you. Because we could very easily do that. Um, what is the next? Oh, hey, a moon. That's funny. Hmm. Master of Master has to die last. So I guess we're going up for now. Look at that big scary set of spooky things. Spooky spells. Spooky scary skeleton. Alright. I do not really care about damage anymore because we've got unlimited healing, as long as we're not, like, permanently frozen in place and taking damage to our own spells. Not like that would ever happen. And I probably shouldn't even say that out loud, considering how prodigious my luck has been. <laughs> but, you know, I'll say it anyway, why not? Alright, this wand is, um, it's, it's gonna be my utility wand, I've decided. Right, right now, right this instant. And, um, what are we going to get rid of for it? I'll get rid of Sawblade Orbit because it's really not that big of a deal. Spark Bolt Trigger is old news. And that's, that's good. This is fine. I'm going to dump all these. I'm going to put Buoyancy here. And, um, that's it. That's all we need to do. So th this wand is going to get dumped very soon. I don't need the Buoyancy for long. Buoyancy is a really, really good spell that you can do a lot of dumb shit with. Um, but that said, it's something we can always come back for if we want to do a really long run. Alrighty. One spell that I want to keep an eye out for at this point is Spells to Power. I might play around with that. I might do a couple more boss kills and stuff on this run after I do the, um, the, the fish quest. 
I think that would be pretty fun. It's always it's always nice to play with your power, you know? If you got it, you might as well goof around with it a little bit. Okay, so let's jump up here. And hello, fishies. I'm gonna go ahead and grab a fish. There we go. We're going on an adventure. <laughs> Look at him go. I'm teaching the fish how to fly. Hang on, I gotta make sure that I, I don't lose him. I might need another one. Oops, I did drop him. So yeah, the, the fish can take fall damage. I'm very lucky this one didn't. Because um, fish are one of the few things in Noita that can take fall damage, funny enough. For some reason, I don't know why the Nala devs thought that would be funny or, or like, just, but, you know... Just, just the, I guess, luck of the draw. Unlike, uh, at least fish can't be stained. They cannot be stained in any way. I remember for a while there was a misconception that they couldn't be polymorphed, but if you shoot them directly with, like, a polymorph shot, they in fact can. Alright, so, to do the fish quest, you need to bring this fish up to this altar. And then when you place them on the altar, uh, you're good to go. That's all you need to do. Except, we're gonna take it a step further and double our rewards. So, um, let's go ahead and place our fish, and we're gonna go ahead and drink this flask here, and hopefully I timed that right. And there's the respawn, and you can see the event happens again, resulting in us getting two wands. So, now, we've got two of these things, which is exactly what we wanted. Um, we're gonna have to carry them one at a time, but that's okay. So, we are going back down now. That is the game plan. But, um, do I want to leave one of my wands up here? Uh, it's fine. We'll, we'll, ju we'll just do two trips. It's not that big of a deal. So, yeah, we're, we're leaving the buoyancy wand behind. We don't need it anymore. Now, it is time to go and deliver this thing. By the way, I believe this translates to something like Pike Jawbone or something like that. So, so, something along that line. If, if you know Finnish or you remember the translation, feel free to share that in the comments down below. Um, but yeah, it's it's a pretty cool little quest line, and it's it's very very simple. But uh, there, there's two different rewards you can acquire, which is why we need the two different wands, and. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little bit horrifying to see all those fish die, but, you know, it needs to happen in, in, in for the, the quest. Whoops, I, I went a little too far down. Uh, if you're wondering where we're taking this thing, we are now taking it to the anvil, which should be somewhere up over yonder. And, um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do the... Hmm, which, uh, which unlock pattern should I do this in? I, I think I'm going to unlock the, the fancy wand first. So let's go over here. And we're going to leave this wand behind because we're not going to need it for a moment. And we'll bring this with us because the cantile is finally coming back into play. So you need to combine the cantile with the, the bone wand. And uh, with those two combined, you're able to uh, create a special thing and uh it's 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 pretty sweet it's pretty good it's it's not like the greatest thing ever but it's it's definitely strong so remember that you got to place these in order cantil first and then this thing and then together combined they make this wand which has summon swamp on it and look at the dank stats on this puppy. This is actually like a sick wand. Like that's a really good wand. It, the the Castellan recharge time are super low. If you get some mana going on this thing, you will just go nuts. It's very good. Um, that said, let's see what we're gonna replace. I think that this wand is going to go up here. This swamp can st stick in my inventory for now. Summon Swamp is a very important spell, and it is going to be the last piece of the quest that we complete. 
Goodbye, Red Glimmer Wand. You served us incredibly. Nice, nice job. See, it's, it, I would say see you again in the next life, but we're not dying with it in our inventory, so there's no chance of us having it spawn in. I say that while there's a bunch of polymorph nearly flying down on my head. <laughs> Welcome to Noida. You were never safe. So yeah, next step, we're gonna go back up. Let's let's do that really quick. One of these, and. Yeah, we're, we're just gonna zoom back on up the same path. This thing's a little slow. It's kind of it's kind of laming me out, honestly. I, I want to go faster. Let's let's make it faster, shall we? It'll save us some time in the long run. Uh, we need another double spell on here. We need another mana on here. Ow! Oof! The hungry ghost. Why? Why you gotta be like that? Die. There we go. Alright, so we could use some more cast delay reduction if I had to guess. That's 0.25 cast delay. This is some cast delay. Um, let, here, let's let's actually like do some basic ca counting. How about it? Are you okay with that, chat? I did YouTube chat, I guess. I don't I don't know. My my brain. I'm slipping. I'm slipping on this long run a little bit. Um so remember we got pinpointer, which means that uh, quad cast wouldn't cause any spread issues for me. But let's see here. So we've got one and then one, two, three. And we need that up there. Maybe, maybe we just take this off entirely. I think the wand refresh. I, I guess the wand refresh is for the circle of vigor. So that way that can cast consistently. I kind of do want to be able to consistently heal myself. We're going to be swapping over to projectile. We can incur healing in the near future. But um, for now, I don't have that access. So we're going to have to work with what we've got for the time being. And, uh, that means that we should just try to ramp up as much, or give ourselves as much space as we can, and we're gonna take a hit on our damage so that way I can shoot faster. And, uh, that is- oh, hey, we're out of, uh, Circle of Vigor. Whoopsie. Uh, right side, we are shooting fast. I'm just gonna run with that for now, and let's put our COV on here instead. And, um, that means we just need a triple spell down here. So it's grabbing these two, and that's all good to go. This Fi can just go in here. We'll save ourselves some mana. So that's how we'll heal for now, and then this will be our movement, which is very excessive. Maybe I can adjust this to be a little better. Let's go ahead and take a look at this monstrosity of a wand really quick and sort it out. Because a lot of the time, you, you'll see that my wands are imperfect, and that's okay. They don't need to do anything more than, like, kill the basic enemies that are on screen. So it's it's not that big of a deal when they end up with, like, a lot of excess spells. Uh, some people might not like that, but um, for me, it doesn't really play too much of a role. So, you know, just kind of roll with it. One, two, three. One, two, three. And uh, that's good. So, yeah, we, we've got a, a ample additional space there. And uh, our, our wand is pretty much just as strong as it always has been. Uh, we could put Explosive Projectile on here and take the Luminous Drill off. The Luminous Drill would explode me for 320 damage and then minus my resistance. But it would do it three times, which means that I would die in a single hit if I keep the Luminous Drill on there. Which is just terrifying to think about. Also, Freezing Gaze has the self-damage from Explosive Projectile. You kind of just have to know what does self-damage from Explosive Projectile and what doesn't. And, um, yeah, I've, I've assessed it, and I'm going to say that that's a really, really bad idea, and I will freaking die if I do that, so let's not. Um, we are actually moving at such a pace with, uh, with this teleport wand that I am comfortable pulling out the controller, because, um, controller movement is so, so much faster with a, uh, with a tele- a fast enough teleport wand. Um, because if you're aiming off screen, you'll see a lot of the shots are spent, like, shooting backwards, which kind of sucks. It's- it's the one time where controller actually does have an advantage, which is kind of funny. Uh, so we're gonna go ahead and grab that, and that fish has turned into mush that is gross and sad. Rest in peace, fishies. Alright. Back down we go. That was a little bit scared. Scary. Okay, let, let me let me jump on down here. Okay. Looking good. So we're pretty much right where we want to be. I'm going to start traveling a little bit to the left. 
way I can line up with where I was. There's Dragon. I I keep end up ending up going a little bit too far. I'm very thankful that we've got the mobility we do at this point. It's uh, not really too bad to, to move around. Oh my goodness. Do you, do you see me just like flying through these levels? This is wild. Alright, here we go. You can tell that we're in the right spot because we slowed down a bunch. Let's go ahead and throw this puppy down. Goodbye. Ow! That hurt a little bit. And now we've got the Summon Fish, which is pretty pog. That's some exciting stuff right there, if you ask me. All right. Next thing on the list, we're going to put this on here. And when I fire that off, I will get a projectile weakening curse. We are going to run over and make it so we can heal with projectile weakness. Uh, there, there's a very, very simple and uh, easy to execute trick for that. And note that you can do this with any of the weakening curses. I would highly recommend against using the melee weakening curse, though. Just get yourself melee immunity. It's just better. Um, basically, if you get freeze, uh, freeze attacked and you have the melee weakening curse healing, that won't save you. And bites from uh, dragon and... Um, Tiny will still murder you, even if you do have that set up, so I would highly recommend against that. So we're hunting for this wizard right here. We found him, which is perfect. We just need to murder his friends. Uh, there's a couple Ukos up here that need to die. And you also need to die. And hopefully this will be the one that I can work with. So we've, we've been hit. Uh, this weakens uh, all of my my perks have been dis disabled and all that and uh, it's it just basically sets all of my uh, Weaknesses in the last five seconds. We're gonna apply this which is a like a multiplier So when this flat debuff wears off the multiplier be debuff applies and now I have uh, a flat resistance to uh, projectile damage that I didn't have before and if we do this four times in a row uh, we will be able to take no damage, and if we do it five times, we will heal. Which is just insanely freaking fun. Being able to heal from projectile damage opens up um, just an insane amount of hilarious builds that you wouldn't normally have access to. Make sure you don't have that uh, debuff on you while you um, get the, the percentage debuff on you, while you get the flat debuff on you. Otherwise, you will be doing the opposite of um, scaling your resistances, and that's a that's a, a recipe for disaster. That's that's how you hurt yourself really really badly. Note that there's like a lot of interesting little nuances to this strategy, and th there's some really really crazy stuff if you want to start to abuse this. Um, th Theoretic. Wow, this guy is going to die. He, j he just made everything a little bit more inconvenient for me. Um, but yeah, you can even use that enemy to reset your resistances and new game pluses, which is extremely high value if you want to try and do a no perk, uh, maximum new game plus run, which is, uh, you know, a, a psychotic endeavor to say the least and not something that I'm terribly interested in. But it's nice to know that there's a theoretical option to, um, you know, reset fire damage, for example, uh, down to the, the bare minimum. And, uh, yeah, th this enemy is one of the craziest enemies uh, in the whole game for its power. I, I guess a good way of thinking about this, by the way, if you haven't fully wrapped your head around it yet, is th this process is the same process as, uh, or a very similar process to doing the heart, the heart mage trick. Also note that if, so you can see there, it didn't do any damage to me. Note that if you do this, uh, process and that mage hits you, where did the debuff go? That's weird. Uh, and this mage hits you. Um, they, they will actually, hang on, they, they will actually remove this bonus that you've got active, which is kind of scary. It can definitely cause some spooky situations where when you, you've got like this ultra destructive wand that blows up the entire screen, um, and then all of a sudden it can deal damage to you again when this guy hits you. So you gotta be really careful on, uh, situations where this mage is known to be kicking around. Because, uh, what, what can, what is done can, in fact, be undone in this game. So we're gonna give this a couple more goes, and, and hopefully we'll, we'll be set. <clears throat> I 
There we go. Apply that to ourselves. And uh, let, let's let's just do one more for good measure, and then we'll we'll carry on. There we go. So we've got the debuff on us, and we should be set to go now. So. Um, with this additional power, I'm going to be able to do some really silly stuff, hopefully. And, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go after some boss fights, I think. There we go. Alright, so, step one is we have to test our newfound powers. Uh, l let's go ahead and, uh, rebuild our wand. So, first things first, we have to get to a holy mountain. That's, that's certainly an important part of this. If you're noticing my my camera and stuff getting weird, it's because I'm I'm using keyboard and controller right now. But yeah, it's 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 like a, a little bit of a getting used to, but it works. There we go. Okay. So, to test and see if I am in fact immune to projectile damage, we'll use this thing. Whoops. Maybe that won't work. Hang on, let's use a How do we want to do it? How do we want to do it? Maybe with the black hole, that'll work. Oops. Okay, so we just got hit, and we took no damage. That's great. Which means, it's time to get wacky. Um, let, let's throw this on here. And that, that's, that's pretty much all we really need to do, if I'm being honest. <laughs> that should be enough to just make stuff go crazy and I, I should be able to get some extra healing out of that but um yeah any any form of self damage is now welcome as opposed to before where you know self damage bad also we have fish I, I i didn't show off the fish spell yet what am i doing i'm sorry the whole point of this quest is to show off the cool shit let me show it off we got we got fish so fi fish is a funny little guy you can, you can join his friends they're, they're, they're all chill. Or you can make them fiendish. And they actually do take on damage properties. You can see that the, those ones... Oh my god. <laughs> Murderer fish. Piranhas. Uh, so yeah, they, they can take on modifiers, which is like really cool. And terrifying. That fish is... What the shit did it just do? That's just... That's cool. Um... You know, they, these these fish, they got some potential. They're, they're strong. The fact that they can take on modifiers makes them extremely interesting, and you can do a lot of interesting stuff with them. Uh, I would recommend trying them with, like, True Orbit. Um, you, you, could, you could make them a lot cheaper with, like, an add trigger. And, uh, yeah, they're, they're, there's, there's a ton of potential there. Hopefully we get a chance to play around with those. Uh, if not on this run, then on future runs. If you, if you follow me on, on Twitch... You will, you will see me goofing around with the fish on the regular, I assure you. They're, they're, they're gonna be a lot of fun. But uh, for the time being, let's go ahead, head down, and uh, prepare ourselves for the, uh, the last couple boss fights. Master of Masters will be our last boss fight, but we're also going to be going and killing Colmy as well, obviously. Um, Bloodlust is perfect for me, because uh, dealing self-damage is... Like, a, something that I want, which sounds psychotic, but, um, with the projectile immunity, there's no reason not to just hurt myself and be able to heal with it. So, that that seems like a, a big win for me. That said, having the, the shots even, like, fly into me in the first place is a little bit tricky at this point, that's for sure. But it shouldn't be too bad. There's blood and crit on blood kicking around here. I... I'm gonna go out of my way to become ludicrously powerful, because that sounds fun. Um, so blood should be up one level, and uh, or the the crown on blood is down a couple levels. So we'll we'll go and grab that, and see what we can do. There's the blood. We're gonna dump. What am I gonna dump? I will dump. I'll I'll just put this here for now. We don't have to remove it entirely. And we can just put another double spell in here, and light is going to be going away. For the time being. That's that's a lot of stuff. I don't I don't like all that polymorph there. That is spooking me a little bit. But we're doing our best to to avoid it. Okay, so there should be a wand around here. With the crit on blood. 
and then we can start to do the big damage. There's the heart mage. Was it this one over here? It was. That felt a little bit further over than what I was anticipating, but I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay. So, now we want the crit on blood on here, and now we're doing five times damage, which is great. Everybody loves five times damage. Infestation, more like a windfestation, am I right? Maybe. I mean, it's kind of bad, but, you know, also kind of fun. So yeah, these guys can't really deal any damage to me, which is nice. Um, infestation has a lot of really good uses, um, but it becomes infinitely stronger when you're immune to its uh, damage dealing potential. That looks so cool. That looks really freaking cool. <laughs> that's, that's fun. That's just good fun, you know? Here, I guess we'll organize these out again, so that way, once again, we can read these properly. One, two, one, two, and then one, two, three. Beautiful. Looks good to me. So, if, for those of you who don't know, um, blood applies a uh, an effect. It, not, not just a stain, an effect. So, it, enemies that are unstainable can be affected by this effect, including, like, Colmy, for example. Which means that we get to deal five times damage with this crit. Every sub or subsequent... Uh, crit on that we apply or every like flat amount of additional crit will give me um, five times damage so if we get another one of these it's five times damage then it's ten times damage then it's fifteen times and so on like that linearly scaling if you're wondering why I wasn't using blood mist to do that it's because blood mist does not apply the stain uh, like as an effect the same way blood does so this would take a couple ticks to get the the effect on them, while this one automatically applies it to all of the projectiles that uh, are in the uh, pack with it. So th th you could think of this as like a projectile modifier alongside being a material. Um, so yeah, it's it's very, very, very strong. And yeah, it, it's, it's just... Yeah, look at that damage. That's, that's good. That's just good damage. That's good, wholesome damage. Good, wholesome, extremely fair and balanced damage. <laughs> so keep in mind, this is our first time in the vault. And, um, yeah, we're, we're pretty strong at this point. It's a, it's a decent run. There's definitely some ways I could die. I lack most of the, the critical resistances that I would normally hope for on a run of this power. But other than that, it is uh, quite strong. It's a, it's a good run. I cannot complain too loud. Um, we've got another mana. I'm gonna take it because I like mana. Uh, if that wasn't clear already, then I hope to make that clear. Oh, hey, there's Homebringer. We could've used that. That would've worked fine. Um, let's go ahead and do a little dig down here. Because, uh, the, the, the price of mana is just too dang expensive they, these days. They really gotta do something about that. The inflation is ridiculous on the lower floors. Alrighty. Uh, don't know where I want to put this mana for now, so I'll just slap it there. And, um, we don't have any castle issues, so we don't have anything to worry about there. Um, oh, that's looking good. I think we can just explore around here. This floor is pretty scary. There's a lot of things that can go horribly wrong. This is the, the last floor that they really try to murder you on. With all the, the one-hit kill shenanigans. I need this wand, just so that way I can have hollow eggs, so that way I can murder um, the, the funny boss on this floor. Let's go ahead and drop all these. This is not intended as an all bosses run, by the way. I don't I don't have any intention of killing all the bosses. We're, we're just kind of wandering around. I'm going to take this because um, I don't really want to have to deal with lava. That's a scary man. Some enemies it's better to just run away from than to shoot directly. Um, the uh, the ice skulls and the those poly bears are the, the two that I'm most likely to run from before I turn around to shoot them because they are true monstrosities and are absolutely worth running away from to, to reset the situation. Because thankfully they, they all or they they're they're only really deadly close range, so just just don't get close to them. Because when you pop those uh, those bubbles, they can actually hit you regardless of what you do. Um, if you're close enough, it's it's just gonna like splash a little bit on you, and then you're done. So it's that it's that simple. 
All right, so sacrifice three eggs of any kind here, and you will summon a boss. This boss has a chance to drop some really spicy spells. Um, normally, this guy's a real pain in the butt to kill, but because of the amount of power we have, we were able to do it in a single shot. Note that uh, if I were trying to like do this the easy way, I'd probably use black holes. But this was uh, a wand that can get me the, the kill credit, which is cool. It's always nice to get kill credit. Unless you're going for a pacifist run, that is. In which case, then, I guess it's less nice. I think I might... Ow. I'm realizing that this wand has having freezing gaze and summon, summon tentacle on it could be a little bit dangerous to myself. And I think I'm going to remove both of those off of this wand and... Um, j j just for peace of mind, because I'm not safe to freezing or to ice damage and I'm not safe to melee damage, which means that theoretically if those both hit me, I might be in a little bit of trouble. So yeah, let's just remove those two entirely. We have a chance to make peace with Skode, um, but we do not make peace with Bricks. They die. They die, that's what happens to them. Um... Let's see here. Probably not anything super great. I'm going to go ahead and skip out on those. And we will take no more shuffle, I think. It doesn't really do much for me, but I'll take it. All right. Um, right. I've decided we're going to leave the last boss, or call me for last, and we're going to go after another boss in the meantime. We need to line up a situation where I can kill the... Um, the master of masters with just summon swamp which is a little bit awkward and annoying to do um i personally recommend getting him a little bit low health first and then doing the murder if i shot him with this there's a good chance i'd just kill him instantly um and or might kill myself instantly one of the two so we're definitely not, not going to use this but i do need to set up for like a little bit of damage output so i think we'll set up like a, a phasing luminous drill build and uh we'll, we'll just leave our main wand behind um this wand will work fine so let's go ahead and dump all the nukes off of here and we're, we're going to make a, a wand that i can dismantle the master of masters with pretty easily and this is already a two cast so we want to put that there and that's looking pretty good um i don't, I don't think we need to do anything else than this this is this is perfect so yeah, we're, we're going to kill the Master of Masters with that. And um, our teleport wand is kind of in shambles at this point, but that's okay. We're just going to have to accept that. In fact, maybe I, maybe I do this instead. And I definitely don't want Digging Bolt on there, because that's just going to cause me some random damage. Ugh, that's the thing that's making it shoot fast on there, though. Isn't that unfortunate? We're, we're going to go ahead and... Wait, hang on. Is there a way I could do this? There's probably a way I could do this. Let's see. We have a double spell right here. There we go. And now we only have Luminous Drill to worry about there. That's good. And if we pair the fa or the uh, Digging Bolt here, that'll reduce the recharge time of our Teleport Wand by a little bit. And that's not so bad. I mean, it's still pretty bad, but, you know, it'll do. And uh, that means I get to hold on to my main wand for the time being, which I don't really need for anything. But, you know, at least we've got it. And we do need the summon swamp bond. Okay, so I guess maybe we will drop that. Okay, so this will be my setup. And we'll, we'll come back for our big boy. Our, our master wand, as it, as it were. And we'll, we'll dump a couple things on the ground here for later. And uh, let's get moving. So, I actually have a full guide on Master of Masters. Uh, made by, by myself and Latali. You can find on this very channel. And, uh, yeah, there, there's quite a few different pathways to get to Master of Masters. However, the easiest and most consistent on a normal run is what I'm showing you right here. Um, just go ahead and follow along the, um, the, the pathway here until you bump into some Cursed Rock. Follow along the steps, and then you go down. And uh, I like to keep the Cursed Rock in view because I, I don't want to, like, somehow end up on some crazy curve here. Because sometimes that does happen when you've got repulsion. There we go. But yeah, th this cursed rock is a little bit different from normal cursed rock. Eh. Mostly because it was guarded by swappers before, which means that it was really, really scary. Um, but thankfully with the swapper nerf, it's not too bad. 
Um, you can get a uh, an orb here. I'm going to grab it just because I'd like my last boss to be a little bit stronger. But this is not our final stop. Um, I used to run through here, but it's, it's just not worth it. You can go up and right and around to avoid the cursed rock. But honestly, it's it's so much more dangerous to uh, deal with the, the wizards in this biome that I, I tend to just bypass it entirely. And um, y you'll see. So if we go out and around here, this is a really great spot to be because you can just uh, fly about halfway up here. Feel like you can go all the way to the top just kind of to kind of get a sense of where you are. You can see that it's it's pretty... It, it goes pretty far up, but you don't need to go that far up. You just need to get like a screen and a half or so um, up, and then you're good to go. And uh, yeah, we're, we're just going to sprint through here. We've got unlimited healing, so we don't really have that much to worry about. We're looking for this dense rock here. The boss music has started. Um, you can see there's the boss right over there. We don't ever really need to get close to him because Summon Swamp is hilariously strong. Uh, normally, we'd use acid here. But, um, you know, we can, we can just start dumping this like crazy, and we don't have anything to worry about. And you can see the air bubbles are starting to show up, because they're drowning. And, uh, yeah, that's that's what's going to happen. They're going to drown to death. Um, that said... Oh, we've been twitchied, so we're, we're going to have to wait this out a little bit. But we're just going to keep spawning these in. I'm going to try and go over this way, in the hopes that I can bait the boss over this way as well. And, um... Gonna make this our main wand. We, we've got repulsion, so we don't really have that much to worry about. But I would love to get this boss away from the area that they're currently hanging out at. This is a little bit annoying. Um, okay. Yeah, this is this is getting ugly. This is getting a little problematic. Okay, let, let's go ahead and start shooting the orbs. Oh my god. Okay. <laughs> Are they getting in here? Hang on. This is getting pretty monka. I'm gonna have like a, a spot that I can dive down at. Whoa. Hey. Oof. Took a little bit of damage there. Can use this to heal all the way back up. I wanna deal with the, the wizards as quickly as possible. Because they are problematic for sure. Okay. So remember, we wanna kill the, the purple orbs here. This guy's being a little bit of a joker, but that's fine. We got a way to deal with jokers. Do a little- ow! That's a little scary. But yeah, just hanging out in like a tube. Whoops, that's a red. You want to shoot purple, not red, by the way. Of course, you may not have unlimited healing at this point, so... You know, don't, don't be a reckless idiot like me. You might want to get a little closer. And be a little bit more careful. I'm gonna shoot this guy, and this guy, and this guy. There we go, all those guys have been shot. That's good news for me. This is a good angle. We have been shot by that, which means that we are now weak to projectile once again. But there we go. So now that we've got all those orbs down, we are free to drown this frick once and for all. And we're gonna set that up. And, uh, yeah, I can kind of see the orbs through the ice here, which is actually really handy, because we're going to get them a little bit lower health. And, uh, once again, our objective is to drown them, not to, to kill them outright. So, we, we need to get them as low as we can, and then let the drowning do the job. You could just be really patient. Go, go like, read a book or something. And get this guy nice and low. But, um, you know, I got places to be. <laughs> let's let's just murder him. Murder him and then drown him the last little way. That seems good to me. And hopefully this will do the trick. This should this should be pretty good. I'm hoping. There we go. That's it. So we don't need our polymorph anymore. And uh got enough inventory space for all the goodies that this guy has probably dropped. So let's go ahead and get on down here and grab the, the goods. Got this and this and one of these and... Oh god, I'm drowning a little bit. Yeah, it's fine. Dr drowning is just part of the business. So yeah, we got the new spell Wand Homing, which homes directly to wands. It's pretty cool if you're on like a long run looking to get a very specific item. It's great for that. 
Um, other than that, it's, it's like, very, very situational. But I'm glad it exists. I think it's pretty cool. And, and yeah, that, that is the whole entirety of the, the fish quest line completed. Um, that was, that was the entire thing. I hope you enjoyed that. Now, let's go murder the last boss and clean up this run. Yeah, this has been a fun one. This has indeed been a fun run. Um, if you like longer runs like this, let me know. If you preferred the shorter run, let me know. Like, obviously, I, I, I want to make this content as useful for people and as entertaining for people as possible. Um, I hope that you learned something new in this video. And if you, if you did, maybe maybe leave a like. I don't know. It's up to you. You, you could. You could help me with the algorithm. Um, if you want. I, I, my my dream long term for this channel is uh, being able to like hire someone to to help me like edit even more and just like put out more content because I, I feel like there's there's so many things that I can do it's, it's it's just hard to find the time to do it all you know it's one of those things but yeah let's go ahead and make our god wand and uh, murder the heck out of Colmy and we'll go from there. So let's go ahead and pick this puppy up. We're going to go ahead and do some slight editing to this thing to make it even stronger. And the first thing I want to do is replace this with tentacle. Pull this off entirely. Do we have any multi-hit spells in here? Yes, we do. Okay. Um. So... I guess we should go back up briefly and do some quick murders. I, I need a little bit of money. This is, this is how you lose a run, by the way. Don't do this unless you're you're looking to be really dumb. Um, but yeah, dying like a cool person is way better than winning like a lame person. So I would I would recommend dying like a cool person, unless unless you're really interested in getting that win. Um, yeah. So let's go ahead and farm up a little bit. You can see uh, I took some damage there because those tentacles will deal damage to me. But um, I don't really care that much. It's it's fine. It's just, just, a, just a little bit of damage. That's, that's noisy. I don't know what that is. Bouncing around. I'm not a fan. Piercing's pretty common on this floor, so I'd love to find one of those. No luck so far, but that's okay. So we're going up to like 4,500 gold here really quick. It shouldn't take too long given uh, the amount of gold that you can acquire on this floor. And fa the fact that I haven't really killed most of the things on this floor either. Ouchie! Good thing my, uh, my projectile healing is, is kind of getting me- do bailing me out of the, the damage that I'm taking here. It's pretty nice. It's funny. This, uh, this is, uh, one of the, the times where people will probably notice that I'm- I'm actually- like, normally I- I completely- don't care about gold at all because it's like it gets you killed but th this is where my gold collecting skills they could probably use a little work <laughs> i definitely miss out on like a chunk or two that that could probably um you know m make a bit of a difference but the way i look at there there's there's unlimited spell or unlimited enemies to murder so it's not like i'm gonna run out anytime soon there's always something to murder okay here we go Let's just dive on down, and we should have the money for this wand here. Now we've got a plasma cross, which is gonna be very, very overpowered with an add trigger on it, that's for certain. And we'll go ahead and do that, and uh, you know what, I hear that people like nukes for some reason, I don't really, I don't, I don't get it myself too much, but you know, if, if you enjoy nukes, I'll throw a nuke on there for you, why not? That sounds kind of cool. And some some glue sounds pretty funny to me. And we sh we gotta have the fish on there because it we, it's the new spell, it's the new hotness. Uh, let's get rid of one of our notes for that, and that should be pretty good. Let's go ahead and pick this puppy up. So this is supposed to be like a one shot wonder wand that just like does a billion damage. And that now that I look at it a little bit, it's probably gonna lag. It's uh, pretty hard. So the tentacle timer has a unique the the unique thing where if the tentacle tip touches something for multiple frames it'll activate the payload multiple times 
And um, because we put an add trigger on the plasma beam cross, the plasma beam pro cross is going to um, activate this entire payload every single frame, which means that we've got like uh, a frame stacking effect where this is going to go into this and, you know, it's, it's, it's going to be kind of cool and very, very bad for my computer probably, but, you know, who cares? And uh, yeah, then, then imagination. One of those. But yeah, we, we could obviously scale this even further if we wanted, but uh, I'm pretty happy with what's on there currently. Maybe like another tentacle sounds pretty good. And... Hmm. Yeah, I think that's good. I think this'll do. Let's go ahead and murder the boss. I'm gonna play around the three orbs and be a little bit safe. But let's let's go ahead and fire this wand and crash the game immediately, probably. We're gonna be all ambrosia up and just wait for a moment. Whenever you're ready, buddy. There we go. <laughs> Alrighty. Well. Um, you know. I guess I'll be back in a moment. I'm gonna take a bathroom break. See if this loads up. I'll fast forward for you if it does. Otherwise, we'll we'll just pick back up on the the restart. Alrighty, let's try that again. Um, maybe this time, if <laughs> we go a little bit less extreme. Hmm. Yeah. Let's let's go ahead and just make it so the nuke is the trigger. That way, it doesn't cause as much issue. We gotta put our fish back on, so then we've got a fish sacrifice, and, uh, well, well, we'll throw this on too, why not? There we go. Alright, let's try again. This time it shouldn't cause nearly as much problems, and, um, yeah, it, sh it should be a lot better. Here, let's put this on the inside, that'll save us some mana. One thing to note about add trigger, I guess I don't, I, I don't know if I've said it already on, on this segment, but, um, add trigger is making all of these spells cost 10 mana. So the, these things that would normally cost an absolute ton, it only cost the 10. And, uh, that is a fantastic deal. Let me, let me go over this wand really quick, actually, because I, I don't think I've done so already here. Let's, let's move some stuff around and improve it a little bit. So tentacle timer is, uh, basically going to activate all of these spells, or uh, specifically this spell. Um, every same single frame that it's touching the center of the boss. Uh, the add trigger is making short-range homing, bloodlust, and personal gravity field all be inherent properties of this nuke and making it all cost 10. The nuke is then drawing into crit on bloody, which is grabbing double spell, which grabs can't heal, which grabs double spell, which grabs can't heal, and then another, uh, th this double grabs the triple. The triple grabs, uh, infestation into glue ball. This triple which is finished by this one, grabs uh, the summon fish and the plasma beam, uh, and then obviously the triple finishes off here, which grabs the horizontal barrier and the blood, which grabs into the copy three random spells, which is going to grab... It's not actually going to grab the Omega all three times. So because it's copy three random spells, it is only going to grab the Omega once now, and it's instead going to grab from these spells here because they have not actually entered into the discard pile because of add trigger which means that we're probably going to get extra nukes or you know extra of these other spells in fact i th i think if we're not going to be using the plasma to proc every single frame there there's not actually that much point to using the add trigger because it's, it's just going to like limit the the wand's potential to go boom so yeah i i think that this will be cooler without the add trigger in this scenario um, but if I were going to, like, go and fight some other enemies, then, and, and, like, not have crazy explosives on it, um, the add trigger combination would be really, really strong and effective, and I would highly recommend using it. But, yeah, for, for this scenario, we need to weaken our wand significantly in order to make it so this is actually functional, which is exactly what we're doing. So let's go ahead and give this another try. Hopefully this boss fight will go a little bit... I mean, the last boss fight went fine. It's just, you know, we weren't able to do anything. Oh, hey, fun fact. This enemy is the only enemy in the game that you can eat alive. That's that's not a thing with any other enemy in the game. 
the the enemies that, that this dude spawns. It's pretty funny. It's a very specific fun fact, but I like it a lot. <laughs> okay. Um, well, he just got killed by the nuke there. That was actually really sad. We didn't get anything cool going at all there. Yeah, the procs weren't just weren't nearly as awesome as I'd like. And you know why? It's because I actually incorrectly set up my wand. Um, because when I took off the ad trigger, I didn't get the multicast. Let's go ahead and shoot something else. That that was a dissatisfying finish. I apologize for messing up my wand there at the end. I imagine many of you in the comments uh, I saw that immediately and were like, "What are you doing?" <laughs> here, let's let's go let's go shoot something up here instead. Um, here we go. I I, I want to get my big boom. You know, I can't I can't finish without like a large boom. Here we go. You will you will be the boom. Where? There we go. Not quite as cool as without the boss, but, uh, or as with the boss, but still pretty good. Still pretty satisfying. But yeah, I hope you learned a thing or two about wand building or, or about Noita in general from, uh, this run. And good luck with your very own fish quest. Um, I, I think it's a really fun mid-game quest. It's, it's not nearly as painful as something like the sun quest. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a good introductory to quest lines, and I really like it. So yeah, once again, thank you to Nala for adding in so many more cool uh, extra things into Noita. Um, it really breathes life into the game. And uh, I look forward to seeing what else gets added. Um, not that we really need anything, because like the modders got us covered as well. <laughs> That's awesome. But yeah, uh, I hope you enjoyed this run. Uh, once again, those were just cosmetic mods that I, I ran for the, the Pride tablet and my own little home. And yeah. I hope you enjoyed uh, this video. Subscribe. Go go watch some other videos. I've got like a million awesome challenge runs that uh, are, are just really fun. And I'll catch you next time. Bye-bye.